listening to NT Paranormal After Dark. Nothing normal about it. Everybody, welcome back to NT Paranormal After Dark podcast. So, I have taken control of my podcast back from Sarah, who stole it from me last week, while I drank bourbon. Thank you for that, oh, by the welcome. way. It was, it was a nice reprieve. You did a pretty good job. No, I didn't. It was okay. I don't know. I was drunk, so I don't really <laughs> remember it. I remember we talked about werewolves or something, but uh, I got a pretty good show uh, lined up for you guys uh, today because we have a new guest in the studio that has never actually done the podcast with us. He's been a part of the group for a while now, but um, you probably don't know a whole lot about him because like uh, Kristen, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, uh, he spends more time behind the camera than in front of the camera. Uh, He's been a photographer. He's worked in multimedia for a number of years. And Sarah calls him dad or daddy, but I'm a little uncomfortable with that, so I'm just going to call you Don. I hope that's, I hope that works that's out. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how you doing? This is great. I'm here in the inner sanctum. I'm looking at. You've even got a can of Duff beer on the. Oh, that's well, new. That's, that's new. actually new. I oh, bought that last week. Huh? This has everything. It's, this is wonderful. Yeah, uh, I actually like rearranged everything uh, about a week. Like I don't know how many people watch it regularly. But I actually got the Ghostbusters in the shot now. I put them up there. I've got a Slimer in the other room, and then I got the Proton Pack and the and all that stuff. And I've got a Ghostbusters yeah. poster somewhere. I but saw the Proton Pack. That's yeah. So I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about that. I'm glad. See, somebody appreciates it. You never. You just tell me I'm stupid. No, I said you're a nerd. Okay. Well, <laughs> they're not the same. So, um. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. You bet. It's, it's uh, you know, you've been on a number of investigations with us now, and um, you know, we hardly ever talk to you like on camera or anything like that. No so one pro- ever talks to me. Yeah, so so probably nobody knows anything about you. Um, and you're you're our elder. You know, oh, her. You yeah. know, so I'm gonna pick on you for being old a little bit. Hold but, my teeth. Yeah. yeah, but um, you're the but you're the least senior member of the group like you're the newest one you kind of just got drafted f- drafted in um because you're a really good photographer oh well thank and, you and, and i have i've always been like a hobbyist photographer but then you came in and started doing better pictures than me and you so, made brad sad yeah and so i had to go buy better equipment and start trying to do better pictures and i thought it was really cool because I, I noticed like all the the side pictures you would take when we were out like scouting or, or doing interviews and stuff like that. And then I, I would just be taking pictures and then you, you would like send them to me later and look at them. Like that's almost just like a picture I took. I, I just thought it was really interesting. We would do similar yeah. shots. It's scary. I just, I just like the things that are from like the, uh, the different perspectives, uh, it, the, the, the kind of like odd angles and stuff like that. And you seem to kind of have the same eye for that where Odd you yeah where you like looking at it from a, a different perspective <laughs> and that's kind of why i titled the podcast what i did you know mm-hmm. because you you take a different perspective on the the photography and how you look at the scene but you you also seem to have like different ideas about the actual investigations and things like that you're you're, you're not like a typical investigator it's it's just kind of weird never how you thought i'd be it. doing this no so um so how did you get up to this point? Like, what, what is? I actually don't know a whole lot about your background other than the little snippets Sarah's told me. So, so now we're going to get into it. I'm, I'm going to find out what. There's no telling take. what those snippets. Were, oh, I, mostly you used to work at. <clears throat> well, to you before it was TXU. I worked at a yeah. nuclear plant. Yes. So, and I remember yeah. playing with the the, the screen, and, the uh, the blue screen or green screen, whichever it was. Yeah, my my primary job when I was hired on there was to do all the. Uh, uh, visual aids for classroom presentations. I had a job because of Three Mile Island, this thing that happened in 1979 where <clears throat> they just tried to melt the place down. Right, yeah. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission decided that maybe they need training. <laughs> I lo- I just got done watching a documentary on a, on this guy. <laughs> he he it's it's called Dark Tourist on Netflix. You might like it, but he 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 like goes around all the like kind of like us. We we look for these like weird locations right. and take tours and stuff. But he went to um Fukushima. He went to Fukushima. Oh, oh, oh. yes. And uh, uh that's when they were like, "Oh, uh, the the radiation should only be like 0. 0.2." And they get up there and it's like two point something he's like no i need to go home yeah it was it was like 10 times the amount of chernobyl and they're trying to get people to like come back and, and live, live there. there 
Well, you learn in the nuclear industry that it's called uh, time, distance, shielding. Right. So you minimize your time, distance, and you want to be behind the fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> That actually works. That, yeah. Uh, let him suck up all the zoomies and you have well, that him. and you just chug a whole bunch of calcium and vitamin D. Yeah, uh, iodine is, pills. Is, yeah, as long as you don't get it in your bones. Uh, Saturated thyroid. thyroid yeah. So so you're not irradiated, right? You're not like carrying anything? I, I got out before. Okay. The the ca- contamination levels got too high. So, yeah. uh, so how did you get into like the media and the photography and all that? Pure luck. Okay. I mean, literally, that's that's right. what it was. Uh, got my first uh, thirty-five millimeter camera when I when I got out of high school because the best thing that people gave me as a graduation present was money. At, Thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I ended up with a, uh, a a ticket that my sister had got to me to go to Germany. That was I didn't even go to my own graduation. I had a plane to catch, so really? I got special special permission from the principal to yeah. Take off. Go I'm to, right there with you. What, was she yeah. living on base then? Yeah, she okay, was, yeah, on, she was a, in the military. A town called Heilbronn uh, in, in Germany and uh, went to Stuttgart. And, and on the shelf was this wonderful uh, Pentax. It's the old Spotmatic F. I always wanted a 35 millimeter camera and I had the cash and it was cheap because it was in Europe. And that was, I was launched from 1975. I have been taking lots of pictures. And then. And um, just because the conversation came up last time we were out, we were talking about pictures, and this is film. Like, people that are watching this need to, like, remember that when you started taking pictures and all that, it was with film. It not was called Kodachrome. Yeah. Kodachrome 64 was Isn't there my a song about favorite that? Favorite. Yeah, Paul Don't Simon take my chrome with Kodachrome. But they finally, they finally, in, I think, 2009, took my Kodachrome away. They they literally did it. So I, w- I would love it if we could do more of our investigation stuff on actual film because it would be really great to actually catch something and have the negative there to go along with it. Because with the digital stuff, it's it's real iffy. Like, well, it, we can it, do it. It's a pain in the butt. But it's it's a pain in the butt, and it's expen- It's the expense is the problem because mm-hmm. you've got the expense of developing it uh, and in buying the film. I've got a medium format camera just sitting. Just uh, it, you ready know, for to go. for a little while, we were just picking up the uh, the the like disposable cameras yeah. to, to just run those out, and then dude, it was like well, forty dollars well, to get problem, that developed. The problem I noticed is. Allie takes our picture. She started out taking our picture. She just snap, 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 snap. You get one of those disposable cameras, you have 14 pictures. Yeah, I, I, was, I was trying to tell her, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, you really need to just take one film shot per, like, setup, you know, and, and kind of like what you were talking about, where you really have to choose your shots, whereas... Now it's, I feel like it's almost easier to be a photographer because... Oh, I, it's I, much easier. Oh, because you could just take a billion pictures. Fact, just take the good I can take a million of, pictures of the, the same setup and just take the, and cherry pick the best one out of That was one of, of the hardest things for me to break the habit of was right. being very conservative with my shots because I was going to have to process the film. And right. Buy and and you film. used to develop your own film and all and, that stuff and, too. And now I spent a lot of time in dark rooms. I never want to do that again. Well, maybe. I don't know. If I could afford a dark room, I would build a dark it's, room it, it, and it, I would do it. It is a lot of fun, but it's very expensive. I think too, I've always wondered if you that. could do that. I was always curious uh, if I you can could do develop film. I, I used to know how to do it in a trash bag with orange juice. That works. And, and, yeah, you can, you can develop it with anything that's acidic. acidic. I yeah. never could take a good picture. He's got one where... We were at the Grand Canyon, and he handed me the disposal. Was it a disposable camera? No, it was a it was a, a Kodak camera. It was my, it is my favorite picture that Sarah <laughs> took of, of of my wife and I at the Grand Canyon. You see us from the eyes up. I thought that and it's because all sky. I, it, it's I, I have that that <laughs> framed and hanging on the wall. It's my favorite picture. I of all thought time. because the thing that took the pictures was lower than the thing you look through, you had to angle it up. Mm-hmm. Right. I was like ten. I don't know, but it was tragic and since then i don't think i've taken another picture i have (laughs) somewhere running around i I have just rolls of undeveloped film that have god knows what on them and i every now and then like i'll run across them and i'll get like two or three of them developed see what's on it's usually like me in high school with my friends looking like an idiot like probably wearing sunglasses and doors or something it's i'm like why did we take these pictures or the 90s goggles yeah there there was one of those random ones i got developed it was like me with a with a band i played with in high school and we're like all sitting around like trying to look cool with our <laughs> instruments because we thought it was going to be like in the album sleeve of uh, the 90s album cover yeah, where you look it, different directions and brood you, you know back when you would buy a cd instead of just downloading it online you know so that's what we thought we were going to do with those. Of course, I was 
taking it with a little 35 millimeter crappy Kodak or whatever. But, uh, so, um, so that's kind of how he got into photography, just like as a hobby. But you, you actually, you did like multimedia as a career for a while too, or, or at least I, I thought. Well, I did. It's, it's kind of how it progressed because uh, even out of out of high school, I figured out that you can take pictures. Uh, I did a lot of uh, photos for a, uh, it was a, a welding supply, doing brochures for them, and, right. and I found out that I could give a price, and they would just go, okay. Uh, that sounds this good. Is, yes, this is insane, because I knew how much the you know going to the the the, the lab and getting just regular machine proofs, mm-hmm. where an eight by ten would cost me eighty cents, I could sell for twenty bucks, right? And no one, you know, it's it's magic. It's film. I said this might be a thing to. It, that's kind of how I into. felt about it too, because I've always been like on the the kind of <laughs> the, the the right brain side of everything, you know where. I'm into art and music and stuff like that, you know, and like, is that why we don't get along? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, I, like I played my friend's wedding and he's like, how much, how much do you charge to do that? And I was like, I, mm. I don't know. That doesn't seem like work to me. Like work to, in my head is something that you don't like that you're forced to do. <laughs> and that's why they pay you. And so anytime I get paid to do something I actually enjoy doing as like a hobby, it just feels completely alien to me. And I, I have a hard time. I, I don't know that I would like making a career out of photography or you know music or anything like that because it, it might stop being fun. It after can lose all. its appeal sometimes, right? Because you, you feel like you have to do it, or, or somebody since somebody's paying for it, they have kind of like a say. It, sometimes in it. you have a, a client that's an idiot. Yeah, and, I mean that's one of the reasons we've turned down some of the some of the weird like off the wall offers we've got mm. to like do a show or whatever. Exactly. I'm like, well, you know. You're not the boss of me. (laughs) Well, it's, you know, they weren't offering enough money like I could quit my job and go do that full time. But at the same time, you know, we're the executive producers. Like if we want to just not do the podcast anymore, we can just not do the podcast anymore. If if we want to take a year off of doing investigations, we can do that. If we want to switch the entire format of our show, which, you know, we're in the process of doing, I can do that. If our podcast Uh, is only about cheese from now on, that's okay. We can do that. Go, as long as it's haunted cheese, I'm okay, okay with it. Is that is that a thing? I'm sure if it exists, someone thinks it's haunted. <laughs> well, you can have haunted objects. I don't see why you couldn't have haunted <laughs> Food. dairy, haunted <laughs> cheese. Um, but you also do like you do audio production stuff too, because uh, uh, you do uh, music with your your church and everything, right? Well, yeah. uh, not not to that level. Uh, I, I know Sarah tells me you told her she's tone deaf. N- no, <laughs> you did when I was little. Yeah, really? Did oh, I, I used to I do, do that? that thing that Caitlin does now, where I would put on the headphones, and I still don't know how loud I am with headphones on. Like his roommate has, you know, you have headphones on and you're yelling. No, I didn't know. And I would sing at the top of my lungs in the back of the car, and you and Lori would just stop it. <laughs> it was entertaining. And if you've ever heard my mom sing, it is genetic. Now that's tone deaf. It is genetic, mm, and Stephen has this whole bit he does about her singing. You should have him on the show just to do it. It is excellent. We'll, we'll have him on the other one, the the uh, the alternate dimension podcast. Mommy something. is lovely, and she likes to sing, so it's okay. But it is horrifically embarrassing when you're in high school. Physically painful. No, my my road uh, when I went to work for the it was strange. The nuclear plant at the time was looking for someone with artistic ability. And drafting skills. That's good. that's that's got to be a weird ad when the nuclear plant's well, looking first, for somebody first, with artistic ability. My first question was nuclear <laughs> plant. You're gonna write propaganda. Not, not nuclear, France? nuclear, nuclear plant. I thought, what? <laughs> and uh, I went out and I applied, and sure enough, that's because they were they were starting these. The, the NRC had mandated that all the nuclear plants would have training departments to train licensed reactor operators. They would have procedures. They would know when things were blowing up. Push this button. Go to step B. Do this. So and, working there, did you have to take this like real scary orientation? Like if these alarms I are going had off, to take a yearly qualification exam for unescorted access to a nuclear facility. That actually sounds just awesome to me. That I had it had to cover radiation protection. You had to know the levels of emergency and uh, quality assurance. You had to pass this, and if you didn't, you couldn't card into the the magic doors and. It affected your pay. He has a picture of the 
is it the inside of the Oh, I've got a lot of them. And there's one on your wall, though, in your house. I'm just, I'm just picturing this set from the Andromeda strain. It strength. looks That's, insane. And yeah. when I was a kid, I remember I had a snow day one day, and he took me out to the power plant with him. And I walked into his office, and it looked... Spa- like I- I'm a kid, so it looked crazy to me. Like a space station. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I look back, I'm like, "What's all this '70s stuff?" But no, looking at it then, it was crazy. It's like, like the scene of Airplane Two. There's all these <laughs> reel-to-reel tape recorders. That's the computer on the wall. Well, the progression was so good because it was a ground floor of a new department. So I got to write my own job description. Oh, great! Yes. Which once I wrote it, realized I didn't really qualify. For the job that I was in, it's like, this sounds really good on paper. And so I started off with uh, with drafting. I'm doing exciting things like uh, schema- electrical schematics, piping flow charts, room elevations, wonderful things like that. Uh, then it was, hey, we need some photography. Uh, hand it to the graphics guy. Yeah, and that's kind of how my job does it, too. It we, just, we have a graphics department, and they just kind of... Here. do stuff yeah, yeah. They, they make our catalogs and our, our ads and things like that and the, the first job i had was to go to the the control room of the, the nuclear plant and take detailed pictures for the the company singer link because they were going to be building the control room simulator and that's when i learned about engineers because as i was taking p- pictures guys were coming behind me and changing the things that i'd just taken the pictures of like, take that switch out, put another one in. I thought, no, wait a minute. So you end up having to go back and take more well, pictures for continuity, to update. Right. The, then someone brought in some video stuff. Give it to the graphics and photography so you, you guy. You just get to learn as you go. Here's this yeah. three-quarter inch, it was called tape, videotape stuff. Here it is. It's Monday. Learn it. Give us a demonstration at staff meeting on Friday. And that's how my video career. And by the time I, I left, we had a half million dollar uh, editing facility, A B roll. We were starting to do nonlinear, which was I was just getting my fingers into that when when I left. So I began to uh, do a lot of video safety stuff. You know, you go in exciting things, tearing down a Borg Warner check valve or something in a system. Uh, the, the training was for radiation areas. You want guys to know what they're doing when they, you don't want to be reading the directions in while you're being bombarded. By right. You, you, you need to already know what to do. There, get yeah. it done. Get out. Yeah. So uh, that's what a lot of the training was. So that's how I got my, my feet wet in, in the video realm. Right. And, and that's probably I don't I don't think there is a good substitute for experience. And then that kind of ties back to. Um, our paranormal investigation stuff too, because when we first started par- being paranormal investigator, like none I'm of in us it, knew what we were doing. We didn't. Maybe you. <laughs> in, I, I, I did. I didn't even really, but we were making it up as we went. I was like, well, I know how to use a camera. I I, I know how to use audio equipment. I do engineering stuff, and we went out and we were trying to capture ghosts. And I was like, I want to use science now. That sounds like a thing because we. We, well, we were catching way too much stuff to begin with, and I'm like, this is ridiculous because there's, there's no way. It's interesting because what started me ghost hunting was something he gave me. Okay. It was the little, you have it in our kit now, it was a little, it has a tiny tape that goes in it, a little re- micro recorder. And he had given me that when I was a teenager, and that's the one where I start, I like cemeteries. I've always liked them. You and mom used to take me to cemeteries. I have pictures of her when she was little, just wandering around cemeteries. And uh, I get, took that recorder, and I'd watch some show on TV, and we went out there and started recording. So if not for you, I would not be doing such weird things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very well. You're you're a bad influence, maybe, or a good influence. You also brought home that giant camera you used to use and took video of me. Yes, I did. Yes, that thing was huge. I, I did. I, I I love being able to use equipment that somebody else's budget had purchased oh that would be so great then i could have that was another thing too because i had at my disposal the eighty thousand dollar video cameras with the forty thousand dollar tripods and once you've had a forty thousand dollars i actually miss a lot of the older equipment because it had some bulk to it like 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 i miss having a permanent groove in my shoulder from carrying i i had bought a a rig for a little while to put our video camera on it was just so pathetic because it's just tiny little video and like it had no weight to it so you're just it was it was horrible and then i and then i got like this really expensive steady cam thinking it would it's just everything now is compact and like and it's got better picture 
but it's just it doesn't feel the same because my my very first video recorder had like you know a VHS tape that went, it was big. You know, and it, it wasn't even like the industrial, like professional one, like what you're talking about, but it still had some like bulk, Wait, like yeah. you, you wouldn't shake as much in, in the way it operated was just the simplicity in it was what made it really nice. Right. I took yeah. one of those with me to Colorado when I was 15 for a band trip out a little where you take the tape out and put it into a like a, a converter tape and you'd put it in the VCR. Oh. Well, even the little mini DV one that we used at your house for the for the very first one where mm-hmm. we caught the, the back door opening, that had like a little cassette recorder that went into it. And it, it was about the same size as what we do now, but it was like three times the weight. And it would only record like an hour of video before the tape, before you had to flip the tape over. Yeah. In there. It was just, it was hilarious. It's funny because my kids, they wanted to watch the old school It movie. And I have it on DVD and you've got to turn it upside down. And they could not comprehend what do I do? It ended halfway through. We'll flip it upside down. What do you mean flip it upside down? <laughs> like, what is wrong with y'all? Flip it upside down. Nope. Well, and, and to like me, CDs are still kind of new. Cause yeah. I, I grew up with like VHS and then like your, 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 your kids just are like, oh, the CD is ancient. Like Andrew it may well be to, a phonograph. Andrew trying to play a Game Boy. Like, what? Did you touch the screen. Oh, I handed him one of my little handhelds. He's like, I don't get it. And he's like trying to do the touch screen on it. <laughs> so this is stupid. Uh-huh. I'm like, you, you push the buttons. It's, why is it black and white? I don't understand. So so out of all the, all the st- so you gain all your experience just through actually getting in there and doing it. And then eventually just getting in with the right people to it to actually get paid to do this sort of thing what would you consider out of all these things kind of like your expertise what's your when, when you when you boil it all down what do you think is your skill set you you i've decided I, i'm going to focus on photography okay I, I i i got a camera that i could do video on and started looking at all the editing software and stuff and i decided no so i'm going to focus on photography and I tell people that my, my expertise is from an industrial background is that I'm good at taking pictures of things that don't move. And, Naturally, yeah. And and they don't talk. Yeah. They don't, they e- don't even that's hard, you. too. I mean, because it, it, that's that fits right into paranormal investigation because, like, get out of the shot. I don't want people don't here. Want I, I want a picture of this empty room to see if it's not <laughs> empty, you know, after I take a picture of it. But... Um, I'm always like I've seen your other photography outside of our uh, investigations. Right. I'm I'm always really impressed with the 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 care you put into doing the lighting and getting the conditions just right to to even if everybody's just standing still or things like that. Like it, there's a lot of care that goes into to not just making it look like somebody took a picture of their breakfast on their cell phone. Right, right. Yeah, I've well, seen you take pictures of, like, coffee beans, and I'm like, how did he make that so awesome? I have actually taken pictures of coffee beans, but, but that was for a client. That was... Uh, what, what I really... <laughs> and, and I'm always really curious about, like, what what you did for each individual shot that was different from before, because uh, when I'm looking at your photographs, they're really tactile. Like, like it doesn't look like a photograph. It looks... Like it's sitting there on the table, and I could like reach and grab. There's it. this wonderful thing called Adobe Lightroom. Okay, <laughs> I use Photoshop. I haven't used Lightroom. Okay, Photoshop. Um, now I try to do as much as I can in camera to to not depend on the uh, the program to uh, to do my pictures for me. Although it has saved my hiney on several occasions where I've severely. You do stuff. You get stuff that's underexposed, overexposed, mm-hmm. and it's a, it's just wonderful. I've embraced the digital realm. I tend to realm. think I, I am a really mediocre photographer, but I am a really good graphic artist because I can take a really there mediocre you photograph there you go. and I can blur the background real nice and, and make it look like I did some great focusing effect, and really I didn't. You're the it's, kind of guy that can remove the ugly people from the shot and... Yeah, 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 I, yeah, and see, I, I kind of fell into that too when I was in high school because me and my buddy, we used to just stay up till three in the morning doing websites. Ba- okay. in and that's back when it was like Angel Fire and, and like oh, you could just put one picture on the page and some text, mm-hmm. and then and then I figured out how to do uh, fl- uh, this program called Flash came out, and oh, I w- Flash, yeah, yeah, and I wanted to be an animator. It, cause, oh, okay. Because I, I do a lot of art, you know, comic oh, yeah, books. Yeah. Right. So I, I wanted to be an animator when I grew up. And so I learned to animate. Like, I spent hours and hours and hours doing that. But then 
during the the website process, it got to where you could actually incorporate that into the pages. And we were trying to figure out how to make things a certain way. So what I would do is I'd figure out how to take digital photography and do it in layers and animate them over each other. So I figured like through this like comedy of errors, I like I can fake the the paranormal photography. No problem. Like I, I can put all that together. And that's why I'm like uniquely able and to that's look why at, no one believes you that's a why nobody believes me but that's b why i can look at somebody else's photography and run a few checks on it and i can say no that's crap or well it's an actual photograph but something else might now, be going i found on that it. hard to do when i was trying to fake paranormal pictures like but, for, but like you, you the, were the the methods you were using were you were trying to actually uh do it in the moment not digitally yeah, yeah. you right. got some yeah. cool effects though yeah. One of them I thought was really good. I used it for my book. So <laughs> that was a test shot. It was a test shot, and I thought I it was just really. You did that. I, I liked like, it. That, I, no, that was I liked a test it a shot. <laughs> I liked it a lot. I really liked the ones with the with the dolls. Actually, oh, the oh. ugly dolls, the horrible dolls. Um, yeah, that's a, some of the more disturbing. Yeah, the the doll picture. Is that where I get my fear of dolls from? Is that? Is that I you? rightly so, because uh, my. Uh, my, so, let's see if I can um, make this. Work. My wife has a uh, booth in an antique mall, and there we uh, go. so she had this articulated bride doll from the 1950s, and she brought that right. in. And I took that picture right after this. We took the doll back to the yeah. antique mall because I was convinced that thing was running around. Well, so, at night. so, so when you came through my house, the, there's a, a door at the into the hall and then my bedroom's over here okay and and back before i was divorced my wife that that room at the end of the hall before i was renting it out to a friend um was her antique collection Ooh. it was an entire antique okay. room and she had these three dolls from the 1800s that had actual human oh. hair and they were all posed down there well my side of the bed is even with that door so i could if the door was open i could see down there and I, she had to be messing with me, but I would close that door at night because I didn't want to see him. And I, every morning I would wake up and that damn door would be open and those dolls just like okay, stared at me down the hall. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, you got to get rid of those. She's like, those are worth more than the house. <laughs> I don't care. Them. Well, it, it, as soon as we split up, th- that was like the first thing I packed up too. I, I was like, here, here's your dolls. Take them. <laughs> We're good. Um, but yeah, this was one of the the shots that you were considering for the uh, the NT Paranormal book. And it, see, and I like this. What bridge is this? That's uh, it's, it's Five uh, Oaks, Brazos Point Road. It goes. Uh, this is an old abandoned bridge over the uh, the Brazos River. In, uh, and see, when you first sent me the shot, I thought you took it at daytime, and then and then I kind of noticed there's stars there's in there. Stars. And so you're doing this really cool. I know how to do real photography sort of thing. Where it looks like it's the daytime, but it's in the middle of the night. That, that's the beauty of uh, Lightroom, because uh, that's the way it would actually closer to what it looked like. Right. Because that was just, uh, all that's lighting that is moonlight. Very bright moonlight. Very dark, creepy road at night, and I'm out there by myself taking pictures. And they were coyotes, and it was actually a stupid hoot owl. Ah. Uh-huh. In the tree. Right oh, next to me. I, I said, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, what you don't see, and that's the fun part about doing this stuff at night, is what you don't see is, is what actually gets you. Everybody's afraid of seeing a ghost. It's the coyotes and the mountain lions screaming. Yeah. My, my main concern was a group of bubbas coming down the road and seeing my truck and going, hey, let's screw with the guy out there taking pictures. Oh, and, and they will. They like it down there. Because I've seen Deliverance, and I didn't want that... Uh, but, but yeah, like like I said, like this is real, like you can see the. I really like that you can see the uh, the shadows of yes. the tree down on the ground. Like it looks like it's just a midday nice. shot, <laughs> other than the fact that you can see stars lighting it. And I, I Lightroom it, is wonderful. Yeah, and when yeah. I when I first got my DSLR, I was, I was jacking with the aperture and the uh, the exposure settings, and, and I, I was trying to kind of do the the same thing. I, I was trying to take pictures of the moon, is what I was doing, trying oh, okay. to get it right. But I would just get white like i just get these white shots and i'm like what is he doing and it took me forever to kind of 
figure out what settings pictures I needed. of the moon are not easy yeah i've not i got all. some really good they're not as good as your yours have a lot of detail but yeah. that that's because you have like this massive telescopic yeah. setup I and I, I just I'm have just this, <laughs> this singular <laughs> stupid I, I need a new i'm getting a new camera soon then i'm eyeballing one for about 500 bucks um but yeah like i i've just and i'm really glad sarah forced me to let you start coming because like you've been an asset oh, she did have to force you huh? no I, not really but <laughs> well, we're, we're pretty we, <laughs> we were doing stuff and she was like can my dad come and i'm like what? your dad i'm the old guy that brings candy um, uh, yeah you bring your old man candy now where yeah. there's and you eat it i know it's good okay but <laughs> oh here yeah and so like when we uh we went out to kyle to do the uh the, the documentary with uh, Jared, which hasn't come out yet, but you were you were taking pictures mm-hmm. of that whole thing, and it's just it has this very three dimensional quality to it. And, and most and, people don't know that that's a turned over outhouse that you're standing yeah. in yeah. front of, or maybe you've told people that. I guess if they only if they've listened to this, they know it's a poor. Now job. they know. Now they know. Yeah, it has toilet seats. And, in it, and so. Kyle is a really great place to take pictures too. Oh, like it's it, gorgeous. It's, there's a, there's a lot of scenery. I really like this shot that you took. This oh, was, This was at Arlington Visitor Center. Yes, it was. And it, 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 this is the only one in the set that I've shown so far that's actually on an investigation, and like it just looks real. Cr- so what actually causes this effect? Well, that, we were we were had been discussing that because when i when i saw this shot i i knew of course this is not a ghost and that's not a green orb that's not anything that's a called a lens flare i knew that the camera did, wasn't moving because it was on a tripod so it's so it's, Allie had to it's move, stationary right? so ally is the one who's taking the pictures and i don't know she did some kind of pirouette or something it's a, a <laughs> she's a little jumpy so it's a, it's a 20 second exposure and a right, lot yeah. can happen in 20 seconds and, and a lot of people that don't take normal pictures don't understand like exposure and aperture mm-hmm. settings and it, like you know there the one on your phone it, it's got a very very quick yes um exposure so it, it it captures stuff so you don't get this kind of blur usually what she's actually doing is she's taking a picture from up high okay. and then yeah. she comes down and, and takes a picture down low but in the course of time that she's doing that, your camera is still exactly. taking a picture. And that's how it captures all that detail. But it shows in how the dark. things can be misunderstood. Right. And, and I, I see this type of picture all the time from people. And they're like, well, look at the streak. It's it's coming out of her. It's got to be a goat. Like, you can't even see Allie in the shot. No. Like, me and you, everybody that's there knows Allie was here. And, and that's her camera going off. That's that's the, the mono wavelength uh, light that she's using and then it you still get this white streak from it and that's from the previous shot where it's like exactly coming down and people don't understand that if there's any variance in the exposure of the film you get these really really weird optical effects and the fact that she's moving is why she didn't pick up on the, right. the sensor and, and that and that's one of the things like i always stress on the investigations with with the other people i talk to is the, the control over the environment because, uh, but the the other ladies who are mesmerized by their phones are amazingly still during a right, and, and, yeah, like, like nobody cares, and and like you can see a little bit of blur in her hand where yes. she's been like typing, but like nobody's moving, and you even got this this green. Somebody pointed this out to me too. This I green know a lot orb. of people that are in denial about orbs, so. Uh. It's what? an orb. It's anything. It's literally anything besides a ghost. It's a million things before it's a ghost. A million exactly. things. Uh. I mean, that's just kind of where I go with it. Um, I'm doing a horrible job of controlling this. Uh, okay. Come on, Bray. Get eh. it together. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. <laughs> I'm the best. All right, I'll turn that off for a second. Because we're not into that other stuff yet. But, I mean, um, it, that's why I'm, I'm really glad that she suggested you come along. Because I, I didn't know before that that you were like that in a photography. I, okay. I thought you knew as much about photography as I did. And I'm like, well, why don't I need another photographer? Mm-hmm. And you actually know like what you're looking at, what you're talking about. And you can look at something. No, there's an explanation for that. And so it, it's, a, it's another check and balance to me. Because I feel like there's now somebody in the group that's competent enough at looking at pictures and media stuff that can call me on my bull crap and keep me honest too. So when I look at something and I'm like, Oh, that's definitely something you'll, you can come and just crap on it for me and be like, no, come on. 
We'll be diplomatic <laughs> about it. And we <laughs> usually aren't very diplomatic. About I've, it. I've noticed that about you too. That's a. Uh, I, I feel we have a good dynamic going. We're, it's, we're all. Mean. I get excited about things, <laughs> and she just craps uh, on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So you've been doing investigations with us for a while, and even from I, I've known you my whole life. Yes, you have. You, you, you still seem pretty skeptical about that stuff, or you know, critical of it. I mean, and for good reason. I think that being skeptical is good. Yeah. I think that you should look at some of these things now. I've, <clears throat> I, I, it's just a critical eye. I, just like photographs, it drives me nuts because I can see so many pictures that are posted out there where, ooh, here's the ghost of whatever. I'm thinking, no, that's not what that is. That, that's... Even my own pictures don't convince me. Like, like well, the, sure. the, the picture that got me interested enough that I was like, Sarah, we have to actually start doing this. And she said, well, I've already been doing it. And I'm like, no, we, we have to like buy equipment and do this thing. Like, I was really convinced... But even now, looking back at that picture, I'm like, eh. You will always be finding the reason yeah, why it is not. It's what, e- Even if in the moment I it, think it's really good, given two or three more investigations down the line, I like to revisit that stuff and, and see if I've learned anything else on another investigation that might explain that away and in like that original picture i took it's a it's a great picture everybody looks at it that is see, a good one and sees a ghost standing there and they and a lot of people think it's photoshopped it's not photoshopped but i think it has something to do with the angle of the room and the way the light is hitting that corner and it, it makes the illusion of something standing closer in so the we're, room. N- we're never going to get that picture oh probably not we're never going to come to that conclusion i I don't know. I, it's, I I feel like I could go back and now a lot of other things happen in that warehouse that I still have questions about. But that particular picture isn't necessarily so convincing to me. Even though I took it, I'm still like, ah, it necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to right. be anything. It's but it looks it looks like a person standing there. I, I'll still tell everybody, yeah, it looks like a person standing there. Do I know it's a person standing there? No. Well, I, you, you know how the brain tries to find recognizable right. patterns. and Yeah, yeah, it's just another form of That's why people see Jesus in the potato chip. Yeah, it's what we're designed to do. So I invited you to do this because I thought you would be an asset. You're skeptical. What made you keep, decide to keep doing it? I like the way you guys do your your work. I don't know that I do. <laughs> I, I, well, well. <laughs> we seem to not know what we're doing most of the time. <laughs> uh, I like the way you dissect it. And so it, it's it's not somebody stepping in. I, I don't want to insult anybody. You know, you don't have someone in the room going, I feel the presence. And it's like, okay, you know, if I'm in a graveyard at night, I feel pretty spooky. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sensitive or psychic, but I'm, I'm creeped out. I'm, I'm I feel creepy. This yeah, this is an uncomfortable situation. You're not normally in these places. And, and that's this. that's kind of what we decided Kristen's function is now. Um, now that we're kind of retooling what we do in the group, um, she's gonna actually move away from doing a lot of the video camera. I'm gonna go back to doing that because that's kind of where I like the, okay. the the video and the audio. And she's going to be more of an observer of the group. So while we're trying to okay. observe the environment and dissect everything that's going on there, it's her job to watch what to we're... To dissect us. To dissect us. So when she does her like post-case report, there's going to be like notations in there about, well, they were really wound up before they went in that room. Or they really weren't expecting right. to find anything. Or mm-hmm. um, Because what I recently found out and didn't know this entire time... She has a degree in psychology. Yeah, none of us knew that. Kristen went to college for psychology. And there's she lived some, with some me for two why years. She didn't. We, we, I'm sure been, she's told me. She's I observing just, you. She's just she's really shy, but um, you know, we've been planning to do like all these psychological observations and t- and she just didn't mention it. And so uh, after the show, I was talking about, you know, I was like, Okay, how about we move you away from the can and you can do this? She's like, Well, you know I have a degree in psychology, right? And I'm like no 
She's like, well, what psychological tests are you trying to run? And I showed her, she's like, oh, this is really good. And I really <laughs> felt like she, like she was just coddling me. I'm like, mm. you could have been helping us the whole time. She's also very even keeled when it comes to fear stuff. And like, I consider myself fairly okay with that. But even I'm really prone to mass hysteria. Especially yeah. if Allie's around. She's my best friend. If she gets hyped up, I'm going to get hyped up. Kristen seems almost totally immune to that. And I'm definitely not. We need someone who's not I like think that. she tunes some of it out. I, I have seen her get re- like scared. Really well, Dad was flustered. there the... Yeah, when we were at the con. Arlington Visitin- Visitor Center. And something happened to her in the bathroom. Yes. And she came downstairs. And she just went into the full Arkansas, full Arkansas accent. <laughs> She's just like, something happened upstairs and it made the Murphy girl. And it was, it was, I had to leave it in the like video. I had to wash like, my pants. There's no R in wash. It was so great. <laughs> um, Matt's asking if we have somebody like that for audio. I think he's talking about the, you know, looking at pictures to keep me in check. Um, I do most of our audio stuff because um, that's actually what my background started in. Like, you know, I got the guitars in the back and the keyboard and all that. It's because... Um, I grew up doing music and, and naturally I got into music and like music production and things like that. So when I was in high school and I was in choir, um, I'm not, I'm an okay singer, but I'm not a great singer, but they let me in varsity choir so that I could run all the equipment and like, and they saved a lot of money recording the CDs and stuff like that. Cause I could just do it out of the house with my equipment. So that, that's kind of how, kind of the same way right, you just, right fell into it and, and did it as a hobby and then make I kind of fell into that but I don't make I make a little money at it not a lot I, I got paid to do animation and, and voice acting like two ah, or three okay. years ago yeah. I got to charge like six hundred dollars for that so that that was a little bit bizarre but um yeah to answer your audio question that's what we do with audio I, I handle it <laughs> so uh, before you started going with this did you have any ghost experiences any unexplained experiences? <clears throat> UFOs. <laughs> we lived really close to Stephenville, so no. This was this was different. It's a uh, uh, is a, a cat, Ford, your old Ford, oh, okay. black cat. This cat was seventeen years old when he when he died. So that's a that's a lot of years for a cat to be in the house. And after this cat died, usually in the evening, the the normal thing for this cat to do was come into the bedroom, jump up on the bed, walk up the bed between my wife and I. And he would lay down. She got the head, I got the butt. That's usually <laughs> the way that worked. And this is a beefy cat. This is yeah, an 18 a pound cat. cat. Oh my God. He was a big cat. And after this cat died, at night, I would feel that cat jump on the bed and walk. I could feel every step as it came up between. Uh, enough that on the, the first night, I stuck my hand out. Right. Thinking. What are you doing? There's no cat. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know you, it doesn't occur no to you until cat. you've done it. And you're like, but, wait a but minute. But it's like, but he's there. I feel him. I feel every step. I feel the weight. I feel the sheets pulling. So that just kind of and, and now as the, as time went on, that diminished. It, it right. It, you logic it, but in the moment, it's like a phantom, almost like yeah. phantom, phantom pains or yeah. This, well, it's, uh, it, you know, this, the, the science would be, you know, it's a muscle memory. Like if you're used right. to experiencing it every night and, and you're getting close to a sleeping state, then the muscle memory, you'll, you'll feel things mm-hmm. that aren't there. But it's weird when it happens, But man. when it happens. But and, if I and, believed in ghosts, I had one. Yeah. That feeling was real. I, but I mean, was that the first place your head went at it, in the moment? Is that, is that where your, your the brain The moment was went? there's a cat. Uh huh. He, but but after you realized, but then it's like, what is that? Why why am I having these sensations? And then find out that my wife was having the same ones. Okay, see that she a little... was feeling it too. I said, okay, so this is now and, a and shared when stories, experience. Yeah, when you have the shared experience, that that's when the the experiences, the personal experiences, actually have a little more. Um, exactly. Contextual, you know, a little more texture to it. That, that's why, in, in my mind, I begin to give a little more ear to when people said, I have this feeling or I have this right. recurring. It's like, yeah, they probably do. Yeah, I, I, try, I try to, when we're talking to the clients and stuff like that, I try to pay attention to the, um, the feeling words. Like, I mm-hmm. felt, um, I saw the sensory stuff, not the, I know it's a ghost, you know, 
because everybody knows it's ghosts or doesn't know it's, it, it seems like when we're talking to them. But I try to pay attention to what they're feeling and experiencing at the time. And then I kind of try to casually steer the the conversation away where I find out what else is going on in their exactly. life to, to find out, okay, are they kind of like distressed? Like the, the last residential we went mm-hmm. on, you know, it Hectic was... breakup. Yeah, there, there, there was a lot of activity that she was reporting she was talking about what how she felt about it but you know you kind of get that sense of it and as we kind of started digging like a little more and a little more would come out is is she like trusted us a little more and it was uh she had just got out of like an abusive relationship um they there was a lot of like depression involved in it isolation thing things like that that would cause you to kind of seek out something to kind of comfort you and and most people when we talk to them i I notice when we're talking about the the things they're experiencing the the ones that say it's like a family member or or a pet or or someone they know that they're not afraid of they're always like either mourning or looking for some kind of comfort okay and then the people that have negative things going on it's or they're they're being attacked or or they're actually scared of it or wigged out by it want to get rid of it there always seems to be some kind of uh, negative trigger that has happened prior to it. E- either abuse in a relationship, um, stress in the workplace. Like, like there's always some kind of psychological trigger. And that's not to say that there isn't anything paranormal happening. But I think right. there's a relationship between what kind of psychological state you're in and how you perceive the things that mm-hmm. you're feeling well, and I tell them the same thing. Like I, t- I tell my son when he comes downstairs, he says, there was a ghost in my room. Well, I believe that you saw a ghost in your room. I believe that this happened to you. Right, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not denying that. It sounds real condescending when you say it to an adult. I, I, I believe And, and that's you what we have it. to be real careful with the clients with because I, I, I have to, even though I may not believe that you saw a ghost, I do believe you saw and experienced something. Mm-hmm. I just don't think you may have understood what was really going on at the time, exactly. which is two completely different things. Like, I, I've seen a ghost... It, it in the warehouse but you know thinking back on it uh, i might have just not been understanding what some of the environmental things were going on at the time and so it, it's just it's a different it's weird and without having that personal experience myself and being going able to look at it i wouldn't ever have got to the point where i thought in, in that particular way um is that kind of what you get from like when we're talking to cause, cause you always kind of stand back when we're talking to the clients and just kind of soak it in. Well, that's why I like your approach yeah. to this. And, and, and it just makes it, it's, it's, it's more of a scientific method here. I, th- I guess for, for lack of a better term that you're not just basing it on uh, the feeling that somebody has or, or basing it on some photograph that you know is not what this is. And you don't deny that the, the, the client or the person's having the experience. But let's look at the other factors involved. Right. I just, um, like the experiences and the accounts and all that is really interesting. And it's a good place to start when you're thinking about a case. But nobody else's evidence is ever going to be reliable enough for you to just, okay, check that off. I don't have to go take pictures now. Or there's absolutely no reason for me to not (laughs) believe that this place is haunting. You know, otherwise, what would be the point other than to go experience it for yourself but I, I like to validate my own experiences because it's so un i don't like having an experience that's as unbelievable as i saw a ghost or i saw the goat man i saw a seven behind- foot demon monster with backwards right. legs. i cannot validate that at all but i feel it yeah and i hate that because we saw these things we're very very rational sane people we saw these things well, we, ran- we ran away from it and scared the crap out mm-hmm. of us Oh, that fight or flight thing is real. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, your your amygdala is totally in control. It's, your legs are in motion, and the brain has disengaged. And, and, yeah. and so I hate the fact that I've seen something like that, but I have no rational anything to go along with that. So I like to have some kind of objective opinion on like what's actually going on. And and there's there's so many different studies that are related to the psychology behind it. Um, the 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 physical aspects of it is just uh, in, I'll talk forever if you don't actually get me off of this because well, yeah, I'm just getting into the technical. I was just thinking uh, the problem is is like the reason I don't run, 
Like it was the first or second time we were at Antioch. We kept hearing footsteps and I started, my legs started to run. And I thought to myself, if I start running, I'm not going to stop. Like if I let my brain do what it wants to do, I'm stuck now. It's the, the fight of not doing that. And I like it. I'm an adrenaline junkie. That's uh, that is the other reason that, that I like doing it. It's the it's the adrenaline part of it. The the being scared, which you know I, I like the I like the direction we started going with like the last investigation again because it, it's kind of oh no no it wasn't the last investigation. It's I'm getting ready for this debate that we're supposed to be doing oh, about yes, demonic yeah. possession. So I've been just cramming myself in <laughs> dark rooms watching supposedly real exorcism videos with priests and stuff like that and it's pretty creepy and so you know and of course i'm home alone at night watching this crap and so by the end of it, i'm just like i don't like this anymore and and so i'm kind of getting that sort of feeling back but yeah i'm a, I'm a little bit jaded now because we find an explanation for almost everything almost Almost. I mean, there, there's like a 1% of the things that we do where we find stuff. But that's what but you're looking for. Yeah. You, you want the things you it's have just to so, struggle. It's just so to, far between. To narrow down. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, so that was the, the next question was the place you're supposed to take me to that I find super interesting. And if you're not from Texas, I don't know how many people oh. are on this who aren't from Texas. But in Texas, we have a place called Marfa. Marfa has weird lights. I've never been there. But I believe you went with Grandma and Lori one year. Yes, they had to endure a uh, sixteen-hour drive this because <laughs> this, I've heard about these lights all my life. the The claim of, to fame for Marfa is back in 1956. They filmed the movie Giant there with Rock Hudson, Elizabeth Taylor, and James Dean. That was actually his last uh, movie. They did all the exterior uh, scenes around in this area. Um, but they had these lights, they call them ghost lights, out right. in the desert, and they've had reports from the uh, mid-1800s of, of these lights, these orbs, these balls of light that usually they're low to the ground. You can see somebody took some, some pictures here uh, that just float around in the desert. They, they, it doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason to uh, seasons, uh, weather patterns, it's just a random yeah like like the event. other ones were taken at night these were actually taken during the day and these are really clear i did not have, take these yeah no no these, <laughs> these are these are these are the no the but i've seen the I've footage of what Th you did this catch. is why i wanted to go because in 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 looking uh on the internet there were all these still pictures right very few yeah, actual I, 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 video I found, a, I found a million like this and uh this other one i had here and where these lights actually appear is actually in this area isn't it Cause here's the trick yes because it's kind of hard to see here but uh um uh, the the highway up at top you see right there there's an old abandoned airfield you see where the uh in the middle of the screen right here where the strip is uh further to your right Right, right down there. Okay. That is an old abandoned uh, World War II air base. And uh, directly north of that is this uh, viewing platform. They it, it got so dangerous because people were pulling off the highway that they, the city actually built this really nice... Uh, I thought um, I had a picture of the platform. I did, I did send one. Uh, there it is. Oh, here it is. This very nice viewing station with uh, restrooms. It's got this covered uh, patio that you can stand out on. And it actually faces uh, southwest. And the problem with that is that where that is where the, the Highway 67 goes over the Chihuahuan Mountains. So a lot of people are seeing car lights. Right. So southwest would be this way. And that, yeah, that's, that's where 67 is. And, and I've, I've seen a lot of investigators go out there and they're like, Okay, it's the... Uh, um, Everyone debunks it with the reflection from the car lights. Yes, yes and, exactly. And, and they did prove it. I mean, in this oh, yeah. instance where, where they were facing southwest, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, would, they had a guy with a walkie-talkie out in the car with their headlights on going northbound. And, it, and sure enough, as soon as they were doing it, everybody that was at like the... And I think it was actually before the observation station was out there it could have been it, yeah that, that's it, fairly new yeah and they were saying oh i see the you know everybody out there is like oh there's the lights and you know they were replicating it 
and they were pretty sure that's what it was that it was headlights and then the other one is the the uh phantom Morg- phantom morgana phantom morgana yeah yeah yeah, yeah. some type Effect. of you know this kind of temperature uh inversions these uh, uh, yeah like when you like that, when you're watching yeah. a western and it in in it looks wavy in the background right. because it's so hot um and so that was always the big thing but when you took your pictures well, you can tell if you if you're watching it's a repeatable pattern right and it's very bright at that distance. Most and it, and it, would all, it, was all, it would always be taking the same route same, every time. Same pattern. Right. And, and like I said, they're very bright. Most people don't realize that the human eye easily can resolve a match being lit at 10 miles. Right. Now, if you pull back just a little bit <clears throat> on that shot. So I'm at the north end of this, this airfield. Isn't this, Which and, would be here. Yes. And now I turned my camera southeast. So Which I would be more I, this that, direction. Keep on going with that cursor on down. Keep on going down and keep on. She's at kind of that mountain range that's right at the bottom of the 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 uh, right more right I think corner of the yeah. picture. There we go. Oh, okay. It's in that range. So way off. Not not here's, even looking past the old. Here's film. where the the difficulty begins because it's very flat, right? Uh, until you hit those mountains, but you're looking at a distance of about thirteen to fifteen miles. Right. That you're trying to shoot video. Right. <laughs> but you're using, so you sent me a picture of this. You're using some pretty serious equipment. So you, you start trying to find something that's going to maybe reach out to that, that distance. Now, this was, this is not in Marfa. This is me out trying to get some pictures right, of the Right, but, but it's, the, it's the same rig. And, and a lot of this stuff, this is a, a Celestron C5 uh, telescope, and it's designed for terrestrial viewing, so the, the image is in the correct orientation. Correct. So you're not you're not... Flip, flipping the reverse right because you have a, yeah. mirror, a mirror in the camera yeah. no it's a mirrorless camera mirrorless yeah it's a, right and so the, a lot of this stuff on this rig is actually there to dampen any kind of vibration because at that distance just breathing on this camera uh, introduces a uh, movement uh, that you don't want now i've tried to, i don't have the brains to calculate the the distance and what angle of view this this uh, spotting scope gives me the equivalent of about 1500 millimeters okay that's that's roughly like so you're three look- times a sniper scope you're, it's a it's a telescope it's it, a telescope and you're yeah. looking at a very very narrow angle of view right at that distance so it's hard for me to to tell you what kind of the window of the picture uh, right, but it, it's it's going to be pinpoint. You're 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 focusing in on a very narrow, narrow but area you're also of, at 15 miles. So right, oh, I, you know, I don't I don't have the brain power to. Uh, it's a lot of somebody geomet- else can try to figure. I it out. could probably do it, but I don't want to do geometry. I, live. I I tried to look in the specs of the 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 scope to see do they give you the angle of view? Do they? Of course, right. of course they don't do that. They're not. The, uh, planning you know for, for well, that type and, of and activity. like you said over x amount of you know feet miles or right. whatever you know a 15 degree angle you know up here is mm-hmm. very very close but as it gets further out you know it just it's right. exponential so it, at some point you know even just like a 15 degree viewing angle can still mm-hmm. capture a Dang. whole mountain if you're far enough away so c5 uh spotting scope the the camera is now an old camera that's a, a canon uh 5d mark ii I don't remember what the ISO setting was on that. I was trying not to kick it up too high because I didn't want a bunch of noise right. in the in the in the picture. So the the images that I got are are very dim. Now at 15 miles with a pair of binoculars, I spotted a work truck. Somebody, it's a working ranch in that area. <coughs> very easily identified as a truck. Just with binoculars. Which binoculars. Which is, I could just, see which headlights. Is like, I could see taillights. That's, that's really just one notch above the naked eye, really. Yeah. Yeah. So that was no mystery. People were saying, well, that's just car headlights. No. I can tell a car when I'm when I'm looking at it. So that that is not well, what also, it was. And, and the, also uh, because of the direction you're looking, too. Like, and I am not getting the highway. Right. There's nothing there. There's some old dirt work roads in there. There's some buildings that have uh, security lighting. It doesn't move. Mm-hmm. I can tell a security light when I'm looking at it. It's right. not roaming around the desert. So I, I can throw the uh, the highway out because I'm not I'm not pointed that direction. 
Now, the atmospherics were very good. Uh, if, if I remember right, it was, it was a little overcast that evening, and I, but I had timed the, the, the trip to have a new moon. I wanted dark skies, so it was black out there. Uh, whoops, sorry. And it's very hard to see because it's very far away and it's very dim. And we posted this up as a video like a little while back because Don was nice enough to let me tinker with his video. Um, actually, let me turn on the audio because I find the audio hilarious. Cause oh, you're, there's you're, no telling. You're, you're talking with your mom. I think, I think you can hear my grandma on it. You can hear her. And there was two other ladies, I think, that came up. Yeah, asking what what is that? We, which is really good. Um, I I like when the audio and stuff is running because it adds a validation to it. Because because you're in there talking mm-hmm. about what you're doing, like you're you're adding con. It's not just some random video. You're adding context to it. Um, so when did you, when did you do this? Do you remember what uh, year? Two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. And so this is way before you were yes a paranormal investigator. This yes, was it just was. something interesting. So that also adds more validity <laughs> to it because you weren't. You no. were looking for it, but you weren't like investing a whole bunch of time other than just like you this were is just something that I'd always heard about and I wanted to right. go see if I could observe it myself. Okay, so back it up here a little bit. And so, other than my red circle, this is the this is just how it came out, just the unedited this is video. Unedited. What do you guys think that is? Now, this is yeah, some other woman know. that. Might be one. Yeah. Now, see, they don't have cameras. They're they're spotting it with the naked eye. Oh yeah, it was actually more visible to the naked eye. And what's interesting is it goes on for. You know, a little while. And now like, here, you re- I am moving. This is me right. moving the camera. I reposition, and then I lock it down. And yeah. then from that point on, the camera does not move. Right, and this the is just moves. right after the reposition. And then, um, th- all I did in this cut is I just enlarged the video. I left everything else alone. Okay. I just I zoomed in on it. I a messed with bit. the focus. I was trying to get as good resolution and what i think is really cool with it zoomed in you can see there's actually two lights but they don't fun like headlights would be equidistant from each other it looks like they're rotating rotating right the first time i watched it it looks like they were tumbling end over end but and then um when i zoomed in it looked like they were circling more like a merry-go-round to me is how it looks some point I do something then I think I think you readjust and I don't I don't readjust if I'm remembering right it will go very dim and then move rapidly to the left it's moving but it's moving weird <laughs> and so even with the naked eye they're they're noting that it's it's you can not see moving it. correctly Yes. So I really couldn't see. So then I, I took a, I did some different things. I, I just I put like a a sharpening filter on it to see if like I could define a shape to it other than just round. Right. Inverted the color to make sure there's actually something there against the background. And what I think is interesting is with the. Let me pause it real quick. But the the color inversion thing is, you know, when you're when you're watching it in regular color, one seems to kind of fade out mm-hmm. a, a little bit, but it never fully goes away. When you invert the colors on it, it looks like one disappears and the the other one appears, and then they switch places okay. back and forth. Which headlights definitely wouldn't do that. Um, See, the one trailing behind, and, and then the one in front will just completely disappear. And so that's what kind of... Oh, I see. Okay. ...tips me off that it's rotating. And then um, I think I... Yeah, I did something with the luminosity here. 
which takes away a lot of the shadows or whatever. Of course, it's so pitch black. And then I just slowed it way down. And when you slow it down, it's obviously not something static moving. Like, it's... It almost looks like a fire like yeah, looks, moving around. It doesn't look it's, like a light. Right. I've always gotten more of an electrical feel from it when I when I look at it. I don't I don't know. It's one of those I don't know. If you had to bet. But if, uh, a few years ago, uh, UT Austin sent a group in, and they just blanketly pronounced headlights. End of case. We've dis- we've solved the right. problem. No, you you did not. So. And, and of course, and if they had so reports ca- so comparing, like in the eighteen hundreds, right? Yes, that's there, there were no cars before. That was before a thing. cars. And so, well, when the, the when other the, reason I pulled these other people's pictures was to kind of compare to your video to see if there was any continuity between that too. Right. Because these don't look these in the back. Those kind of look like headlight. You know the way it's streaked, but this doesn't look like your video. It doesn't look quite right. Of course, the thing I wish that I had on the video was uh, some way to, to, to get scale to it. When you know, Just a jet black background. Right. It's very hard to tell, but you know, that's a long way off. Now, this mountain in the back, which mountain? Uh, they is, call them the Chihuahuan Mountains. There's a whole range of them. Right, so so that's actually the, further. They're right uh, on the east. border of with Me- of Mexico. Because I went up Guadalupe Peak when I went to Carlsbad, so yes. that's the same little yeah. range that goes down through. And you, you can into see Mexico. you can see the same mountain here in the other person's picture. So the lights consistently kind of it looks like they go from left to right here, but these are even in the daytime look pretty bright, and kind of look like headlights. But you're actually pointed. In a different, a different way. I'm in, I'm in a southeasterly direction. Right. Yes. So um, I found your video to be pretty credible. I got to go back. That was That's a goal. And you're taking me? Yes. Yes. Yes, we will go. And I'm going to send you with a whole lot of different equipment, like a thermal camera. That okay. would be nice. A okay. thermal camera would be good. Will they a thermal a- camera be able to pick up something 13 miles away, or am I going to have to crawl out into the desert? Is that... Ideally, I'd like to see you climb out into the desert okay. to go do that, but you can use that thermal camera with a setup kind of like he's got. Me and the desert don't get along. I, th- I think it would be brilliant. It would be great if you could get permission to get on the land. There are some old abandoned rail lines that go through there, and I would love to be able to, to hike those. I'll knock on back. their door. Of course, I'm sure that the ranchers in the area have gotten tired of <laughs> random people wandering across their property trying to find these uh, mysterious lights. Pictures or documents that they were actually seen in the 1800s. But I enjoy having something that I can say I yeah. I have no idea. Was it the Native Americans is. who first claimed they, for they the Marfa lights? Because yeah. they had a name for them. So I'm not sure about documentation. I'll actually. I mean, we I'll, we don't. We we could look at. Yeah, I, will I, I haven't look done that a up. lot of research on it because we haven't done an official investigation. I did at one point because I was like obsessed with them because it, they also have the Anson Light story. Ah, uh, yeah. But that's a lot less credible because um, you know Ali used to live out in uh, Cisco, so that's really close to Anson. So she went out there, and that it's just not as it's not the same thing. It's more like the uh, Veal Station Cemetery uh, glowing tombstone. I story. hear the cemetery light thing all the time, and I just it's. Ironically, it's we've been out in cemeteries a billion times, and I don't think I've ever seen a random light. It's, I did at uh, Antioch, but that's just the, people's the, property, right? I, I know, but it's always something like that. You, you, like he was saying earlier, you do not realize how far light waves will travel. Mm-hmm. Sound and light waves mm-hmm. travel almost completely unimpeded because. The only thing that stops them from traveling is actually friction in the air because you don't think of it as like a solid mass, but all energy moves in waves. Now, light travels so... F- the speed of light, yeah. obvi- right, can't mm-hmm. be exceeded, travels so fast that um, l- people don't realize that light also is susceptible to momentum. So if something moves and less a force acts upon mm-hmm. it, you know, in it has momentum in it. If light is traveling that fast and something acts upon it, it will eventually stop traveling somewhere. But it, light travels at such a high speed that it can travel further than almost any type of 
energy wave. That's why you can see stars that have been dead for yeah, you know, millions long. of years and things but, um, like that. Me and Allie and Jeremy went to California one year. And part of this trip, we had to drive down 150 in Nevada, known as the loneliest highway. And we traveled from Utah into Nevada in the middle of the night. And we, we, we were having a hard time finding a hotel because it's the loneliest highway. We finally found this death trap nightmare hotel slash casino. But we're driving down the road and we notice it, it, it's raining. It's, ra- it's sparkly. There's sparkly stuff falling from the sky. So we stick our hands out the window and there's nothing. And we noticed this again when we were driving through the desert. It's this weird effect. I'm not sure what causes it. It's some sort of mirage where it looks like sparkly rain is falling. It's got to be it's got to be light uh, reflecting off of like dust particles. In yeah, the air. because it's I mean, it's dead all around. But of course, our car is driving by. So it's disturbing everything near us. But it looks exactly like rain. Right. It is a really weird effect. That's why I hate seeing photographs of dust and people are saying it's paranormal. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't realize what the light catches and gets captured on film. No, no, no. This this orb's got a little face in it. It's <laughs> it's a physical particle of something in the air that's reflecting light at a like this awesome angle and now that you and you see more orb pictures because people have digital cameras and they can just take a million shots so they take 500 shots and they get two pictures with like dust orbs in them they're like oh see there was a ghost there then why is it not in the other 498 (laughs) shots why is it only in those Mm -hmm. two so what of our evidence do you find the most convincing if you had to pick Uh, some of your audio is probably some of the best. Yeah, um, I I feel I feel like like I try to branch out and cover a bunch of stuff, but I my audio works probably the favorite thing because I do all the frequency analysis uh-huh. analysis analysis analysis. I do all the frequency analysis with the with like the EVPs we capture because I, I try to isolate it just to the ones that actually sound like speech that, that are over multiple syllables and then <laughs> Darth Vader over here breathing. <laughs> she does that all the time. <laughs> that actually that is the biggest contaminant of our audio EVPs. When we when we were first Me mouth breathing into yeah, the Yeah, when we were first going out and, and we were just capturing stuff with the, the audio recorder, she'd be like, Is there anything out there? <laughs> and we're like Oh my God! There's something out and there, and it doesn't help that we're doing this outside. And as soon as any of us step outside, none of us can breathe through our noses. Yeah, and the cedar and the, and everywhere. The, and then when you got the vape, it got even worse. Yeah. It was just you'd hear the the mechanical thing. But it was way before we had a camera. We were just going out and doing audio, and so we we're like, "Oh, this is a thing." And then I think it was the very first video we ever did out in Antioch, and we were like watching it back, and I'm like, "I got an EVP," but then I'm like watching the camera, and I'm like. No, that's just you smoking. <laughs> that's it, that's just been you smoking. It's this actually whole time. gotten to where I edit out anything that's breathing. Like if it's if right. it's a breath, just because even if I'm not holding the recorder, if it's on the floor, usually me and Allie are sitting cross legged across from it, and it picks up so much right. that unless it sounds like a person talking to me with the hearing deficit, I pretty much write it off. Well, audio is is very tough. Also, um, I always said when I was doing video. I could get you a great picture. Mm-hmm. Audio would kick my behind every time because you don't. There's, you, you never know. have enough control over the environment. Exactly. Just someone. You can hear me pretty good now, but if I just do this, mm-hmm. just just this little movement, right? Whoop, I and lost it's, a, my it's, level. A, it's a very specialized microphone. Well, they're too, very directional, you know? right? Yeah. yeah, it's it only captures like what's right here. So, like. Because I've got like the fan going and the air conditioners going, and but, mics but, like certain frequencies, right? They're usually call, called uh, fluorescent. I've tried to try to talk fluorescent lights. You know, they hum at mm-hmm. this certain frequency that a lot a lot of mics they really like that. So, we're, as your ear is not really hearing it, of course, the brain is so good about filtering, right? Anything that's repetitive and it, the it mic just filters out hears it. <laughs> yeah. And so when you're listening to your 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 video, it's you hear it's like the what the, is that the sound? very first video I did on my phone in, in that warehouse, the the very first time I tried to do like capture something on video, oh. you can hear that through the whole where and it's it's oh, the ballast houses are terrible. Yeah, you can just hear the, the ballast, ballast yes. and the light just bzzz, the whole. T- you can't even hear me talking. <laughs> 
into the phone <laughs> because the, the the frequency just hits that that dyna- it's because mm. it's just real crappy dynamic range mic that they put in your phone and so it it just picks everything up but it's strange that for me that the the anomalies that you've picked up on the the EVPs were not noticeable at the time but yeah most I don't know if it's just my brain didn't is filtering it out it's a, a lot of them are in the human range of hearing like like yes. when I analyze them it, they'll be with above 20 hertz which he, if you have good hearing, you can hear well, everything. You there, should yeah. be able to hear everything above 20 hertz. But everything between 20 and 30 is still very, very low. Very, it, like, if you're not specifically, like, listening for it, you would you would just miss it. Okay. Uh, m- most things... Um, actually, uh, uh, when I'm talking to, like, other investigators and they're asking for my advice on them doing audio work, I notice a lot of them, like, they'll use the recorders and then they'll put it on their computer to analyze it, but they're doing it in MP3 format. And that is the biggest mistake you can do because um, it's a compressed Press. file. And the way it compresses it is it takes everything below 40 hertz and just dumps it out of the file. Hmm. So if there was anything between 20 and 40 hertz, it would just be gone. It would get rid of it okay. because the uh, <clears throat> the standard of thinking is since the voice, most instruments and voices don't produce anything down there. So if you're listening to music or a movie mm-hmm. or something like that, you wouldn't normally hear that. But if you talk to somebody that does audio production on movies or um, especially if they're recording like orchestral sort of right. things and they're doing it digitally, they're going to use wave format or uh, or uh, LLC. It's a, it's they're called lossless formats and it captures everything between zero hertz <laughs> frequency okay. complete it'll capture everything that the mic can capture and most microphones are designed to pick up everything between 20 hertz and um 2000 hertz and so it, it'll capture everything that you can hear not just what you can normally produce and so um people don't get it but if you listen to the same recording on a is a wave file and then an mp3 file sounds almost exactly the same but your ear can pick up the differences so when we're doing our audio work i import everything as a lossless okay. file and i'm also not just like I, I do a lot of just listening to it in my headphones to see if i catch anything but i'm actually looking at the waveform while it's going okay. in, in all the places where i know it's supposed to be blank i'm looking for visual cues that there's actually a sound in there and then even if it's like at 20 to 30 hertz, it, you know, it, it would be really, really quiet. I can boost the volume on it a little bit and and uh, kind of do like a little bit of a time stretch on it or something to get a more defined sound out of it. And when you find the human speech in those sections, that's when it gets interesting since the, the lowest that the human vocal cords can has been recorded to do is 80 hertz, Ooh. which is a which is a really <laughs> big gap between what you can hear and what you can right. produce is a voice. So that's why, like she said, we, we don't take the breaths anymore, things like that, because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how much control we have over the room. Somebody outside could be talking on their cell phone. And so we we only look at the things where it's multiple syllables and it sounds like human speech and it's kind of discernible and all of that could be an EVP. But then we pay particular attention to the things where it definitely sounds like human speech to more than one person, but it's outside of what a person should be able to produce. And and then, okay. And then, and then our process is to kind of reverse it. Okay. So what could cause that? And there's not an answer for that yet. There's a lot of ideas like ah, it's a radio signal because if you have kids and you've ever had a baby monitor, you'll pick up some creepy stuff. But we don't know. Matt says he only keeps the EVPs of actual answers to his questions. So he has hundreds of EVPs he's a recorder. And that is kind of a good method. The but problem is the best EVP I think we've gotten wasn't a response. There's two we've got that weren't a response to anything. Yeah, most of the t- most of the time the response is like, and that's kind of why I shy away from thinking that if there is something kind of paranormal out there that can communicate, it's not necessarily human or, or used to be human or anything like that. It seems like it's most of the time it seems like it's completely obliv- oblivious to. Well, it's like residual. The two I'm talking about, they don't say anything in response to a question. But they say something about the specific environment. 
Uh, oh, you're on... go back now. Right. There's a monster in the woods. Right. Which is a. They're all from Kyle, of course. Right. And they're. I'm asking questions, and I that one wigs me out because it sounds like it's right in the recorder. But I saw and felt nothing while they were there. So the idea that there's some creepy monster leaning down and talking into my mic right. while I'm oblivious, that bothers me. I really like that EVP because I didn't have to do any volume boosting to it, <laughs> which is which is really crazy because it, we didn't hear it's it. it's in a range where we should have been able to hear it. Exactly. We should have. Should. Uh, right. It, it's it's like bet- right. it's between 35 and 40. I, I might be remembering wrong if somebody wants to go back and look at the video and say, ha ha. But I think it's between 35 and and 40 so we should have been able to hear it no problem but it's right up on the microphone and it's and, loud. And it's, it's as loud as us but when we're recording we're back here so you can hear us talking but we sound like we're back here it there's so it, it's it's not like contamination it, you can you can kind of tell when it's contamination you're like well that could be somebody in the back but it's somebody like right here and I'm standing there, it. and we have the camera pointing, like, right at it. So, and you can see our faces are way far back, and it's a voice that none of us have. And here's the thing with that frequency analysis. It's a little sketchy, because when I'm looking for a little dot in the waveform, I have to stretch it out. I have to kind of boost the decibels on it a little bit, which is going to change the pitch slightly. And then I have to do a frequency analysis on it so there's a a variance of about five hertz in there that one is it's such a high decibel level that i didn't have to do anything to it i just ran the spectrum analysis on it it's like yeah it's 35 dude i'm like Mm -hmm. "Uh." and the other one there's a monster in that one's real quiet and it's real hard to hear yeah, th- that one I can't actually. It's so fast I can't accurately measure the frequency on it. But it, it once again, it wasn't. We weren't asking questions at the time. We were busy being. Yeah, we were trying not to die. die. Yeah, yeah. That something was there and it was running at us. And at the time, we assumed it was a large animal. Right. Because that's what it sounded like, and you can hear the the clippity cloppity clip. And I didn't know until you showed me the other day that afterwards you can still hear whatever it is walking. Mm-hmm. It actually clip clops a few times, and we're standing. You can hear us run. Yeah, it, I, I always thought the first times I we caught that that it was the sound of our own feet. I'm like, okay, we're running away, but there's definitely an EVP in there because we stop. But I'm holding the camera down at our feet because I'm looking for whatever's gonna. At that point, I'm not even investigating. I'm just like, where is it at? And and so you can see our feet, and they're totally still, and you hear just hear. And we'd had a run-in with a feral pig earlier that night caught in a fence. Right. So that's where our minds jumped because you, you don't want to mess with feral hogs. They're big. And more validation. And, oh, yeah, because you're not at a lot of the, the team meetings, I guess. But um, Oh, there's team meetings? No, sort of. No, 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 no. There's us talking crap about other uh, oh, investigators. Okay. <laughs> Throwing. No, uh, so adventures. a guy contacted me. He did an investigation out at Kyle before we went out there years oh, ago okay. and he ran across our video and he was chatting with me and he's like yeah i did an investigation out there and what i found out there scared me so bad i stopped investigating mm. and i'm like well, what did you see <laughs> uh they would go out there they would investigate at night and they would hear a horse and buggy coming up the drive when there wasn't anything there and he caught some pictures back by the back gate area mm-hmm. of like a shadowy person wearing like a trench coat and hat sort of looking. Were their legs backwards? <laughs> it, no, it, he didn't. So he watched our video. He's like, I didn't see that. But I definitely caught a picture of a shadow thing. And that's I was like, well, that's interesting because there's some things that we caught out there that, that it's not like in the video that, that nobody would know about. And so it's interesting, He the way he described the, he doesn't have the picture anymore, but he described the shadow he got back there, and it sounds a lot like when you and Allie thought I was over by the headstone, and, and I, and because he said, yeah, I saw like a shadow figure back there, and it walked behind a tree, and it never came out the other side. Yeah, because we were like, what are you, what are you doing, Brad? Why are you over there? And you're, you spoke up from behind the trunk, and I was like, no, nope. Well, time to go home. Which is the uh, what was the other video you sent me of the people that were out there, and it's a chick and a guy, and they're recording, and you hear her go, "What's in the woods? Oh my gosh, it's really big!" And then they just run. They're just done. Yeah, that's another group 
the, the, but they're at the other side of the cemetery if i'm right, right. where it slopes down. that's another group i found their video and they won't respond to me i said what did y'all see back there and they don't <laughs> want to talk about it i'm like you don't understand we've been out there and we've done multiple investigations and we saw something crazy out there but i'm trying to validate validate our own story and there's we don't want to talk about it we don't want to talk about it it yeah, but in their video they're just they're having a good old time they're like, oh it's a nice little cemetery and uh there's evps and oh, i What's think that giant thing in the woods yeah and they're like is there an animal back there it's getting closer what is that? it's what oh. let's back up let's back oh. up oh. and then they're just running <laughs> and is it they're just running it's in the woods <laughs> i was waiting for one of them to say there's a monster in the woods and then i would have been like well i'm done new career right. new career path <laughs> If we go to his website, we'll go to your website later. Yeah, I'll listen to him. I like EVPs. They're cool. Um, what question do you leave on, Sarah? Leave uh, off on? I was going to ask about the TV shows, but I'm not sure. Do you even watch any of the... the oh, yes, I have watched them. I love them. I think they're great. God, they're awful. They're just awful. I liked Taps. They are awful. I, I liked the Ghost Hunters back in the day. I watched them for the production value. I mean, if nothing else, they're entertaining. Like, they make a living at hunting ghosts. So, um, that's what made me realize that we have to somehow strike a balance between credible and entertaining. Because... Which is hard to do. I, I don't... Like, I'll sit and watch science documentaries and, and just straight up footage of people doing surgery and stuff, but not everybody will do that. Like, yeah. people like documentaries, so... We're, we're kind of heavy. Shows always have a predictable pattern. There's a build up, dun 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 dun, commercial, commercial break, mm-hmm. and then they have the recap after the commercial, and the flash of the and thing, and then nothing happens. Right, you get back, yes. and it's like, ah, we didn't find anything. Yeah, we didn't find anything. It was one of the first episodes of Ghost Hunters. Was, well, that was the name of it, right? The Tabs Group Ghost Hunters. Yeah. Is they have video, and it's a chair that moves about an inch across the floor, and they all get super excited over it. And that's when I was like, hmm, I trust these people a little more than the rest of them. But after that first season, they just went off the reservation. Ooh, they got paid. Well, yeah. They, they, they cashed a check, I, I and they're no, like, hey, guess what? I have no problem with it. It's just they're not. Well, they... They got to do something to get back. You know what? In and we used to, and I, I still have to give my public apology for it. But you know, I used to just completely trash Ghost Adventures because of how horrible the show was, or whatever. And you probably haven't seen it. There's a there's a the guy that runs that. He did a uh, like a side documentary on uh, a house he investigated in Indiana. Now it is over, like it's over the top. It's it's kind of, it's overblown he's a or douche, whatever. But... Yeah, but the thing is, and even though not everything he captured there is cr- like necessarily credible or whatever, he very he very painstakingly he wasn't like faking anything. Um, he did a really good job of getting everybody's experiences in, in, in like documenting what people experienced in the house and, and, and digging up the the factual information behind it and then his actual investigation part of it was actually very really very short w- which was really short and which, then he gets physically ill which is why i think it was a, right, a I, physical contaminant they were drinking yeah. the water out of the faucet he that's because you noted he wore glasses after right he did that because something actually happened to his eyes i think there was something in the water because they yeah. all had real psychological and physical problem like one of the guys his organs started shutting down after he went in the house Mm -hmm. that has to be a physical contaminant yeah yeah like like the documentary didn't convince me that the that the house was haunted but it did convince me that people were definitely having experiences Mm -hmm. oh yeah because it wasn't just like his crew would go in and start acting wet and people that you know weren't on his payroll weren't going in and having weird like like all these different people different walks of life were going in and the cops didn't want to go in there the cps had actually noted things that happened outside of the house like in the hospital like oh yeah they had actual police reports and cps yeah, investigations. They, they had a lot of really credible witness they, like some of the best wit it's that, on netflix it's it's pretty interesting no i, I had to buy it, oh, it you did you? Was, yeah oh, um, okay yeah it, it, it wasn't it Not wasn't prime. any of the it evidence or any of the paranormal investigation work he did it was it was that was the the most credible eyewitness statements I had seen where they corroborated. Like they did really good with that. The part. difference between the showmanship and what he actually seemed to want to do when he started this. Right. And, and what I really liked about it is it seemed like he wanted to do the investigation the way he normally does the investigation, but that all just completely fell apart. 
Like he didn't even get to make that video. Mm -hmm. it, it, like it didn't have that didn't happen at all. So that's why I lend a little more credibility to that particular thing rather than his show where they I, I never feel like they fake anything, but I feel like they pump it up for ratings. So assuming most of our clients aren't lying or seeking attention, 99 percent, do you think their experiences are paranormal? Any of them? 0.05%. The fact that they're out of normal, yeah, they're paranormal. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of fits the mold. It's, uh, And whatever they're experiencing, I, I have a tendency now to believe that uh, they are. Whatever that may be. Right? So, yeah, that's the whole what is par Like, to me, it's not dead people, like souls not wandering around. Not necessarily, yeah, no. That's... Because in my purview, any um, even if you're religious, if you're not, either way you believe, you go somewhere after you die or you disappear. There's no just chilling around. So it has to be just something we can't comprehend. There's so much our brain doesn't see and hear. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, what was the thing we were looking up the other day where some people can see more colors yeah, than everybody? Yeah, they have four cones in their eye. Um, it's tet tetrachromic uh, vision. Right. And they can see colors that no one... And there's actually... I was looking at... There's no test for it because they can't produce those colors on a computer screen because you're running off prime colors. Right. So they have no physical or no digital test for that. You have to actually go in for a physical test. Well, and, and I mean, certain animals can see um, in, infrared and heat vision, um, things like that, which it is something you can't see. Okay. It, it was free on prime a couple weekends ago, but I don't know. I, I just, I bought it. I, yeah. I buy every stupid paranormal. Like, I'm a subscriber to yeah. that show. Yeah, you got my son addicted to Ghost Hunters. <laughs> or, sorry, it's uh, Ghost Adventures. That's the one. Which has not done well for him sleeping in his room. Thank you very much. Oh, that was actually a guy replying to uh, our Antioch video. He's like, man, I've lived in Grandview my entire life. And I, I didn't know anybody had ever done any kind of paranormal investigation out here at all. It's a little bit. See, I only know about these places because I did so much just random driving. Mm -hmm. And I had a book a long time ago where I'd marked down any cemetery I found within five counties. And none of these back then there was no Google Maps. This was 10, 15 years ago. I'm 16 driving around and I'm finding these places. So I had to actually go print up a physical map and mark them down. Only reason we find half these places. And, you know, local ghost stories. I listen to a lot of local ghost stories. Um, but, yeah, so many people, like, it's so weird because you would think when you, when you talk to just, like, the average person on the street and you're like, oh, I do paranormal. But, like, when we first started doing it, I figured people would think we were weird, but it seems more and more people we talked, as soon as we're like, we do paranormal investigation, oh, this one thing yeah. happened to me. It, like every, <laughs> like even the ones that don't believe have a story. Like you have a story. I it, mumbled it. I was doing you know, physical therapy earlier this year and she, well, you don't work. Do you have any hobbies? I, I, I do paranormal investigations. What? I do paranormal investigations. She was like, oh my gosh, one time I lived in this haunted house. Like, yeah, and really? And people are just so open to talk about it, but. I'm always curious why people ought to, and it seems more often than not, if anybody's had an experience, they they think it's paranormal. Well, it just so happens that my shrink works in the Wright Plaza in Cleburne, which is the most infamously spot haunted spot in town. So when I told her I did that, she was like, oh, wish you could come do ghost hunts here. I'm like, you're a shrink. You're not supposed to believe in this stuff. You're supposed to be scientifically minded. Knock it off. Can I come ghost hunt here? No. Because apparently the last ghost hunters that came through there decided to wiggle all the doorknobs and try and break into rooms. I don't know. I just, in, you know, even doing this, you know, the the way we do it, I think it's, fan like, it, it's jumping to the fantastic. And there's there's no real, even the stuff we've collected isn't great. It's not solid evidence. Like, I, I, there's nothing I can point at and say, yeah, this is definitely a thing. Right. Like, like, I have a feeling for it. But why do you, why do you think so many people believe in it even though there's such a lack of evidence it's just experiencing it it's uh and, and i know that there's so many more out there that have experienced something that they're darth vader uh, <laughs> but they're not they're not telling right they're not sharing just because of that same reason somebody's going to think i'm crazy right i'm, I'm nuts uh, but i there's there's just more to it now, whether it's just a feeling that you're strongly having I, we don't know. 
I, I, there, the I, I find that it you, hard to strike a balance like when I go in explain. and be skeptical but still allow like some kind of environment where they can mm-hmm. talk about it and not feel like we're judging them or anything. It, a, you a really big, need to work on your not judging face. That's a big part This of is my too. not judging face. How am I doing? Not good. That, that's not when good people hear you talk about what you do. Mm-hmm. Then they feel maybe they can speak up on it. And and. Of course, I also like the group for your group because of the way that you handle things. I, I love the way you do history before you go in. Badly, but <laughs> but many times you don't share that uh, history. Yeah, with we, the rest of the group. Yeah, we it, need two people that have it, or at minimum one person who does not know the history you, of the you've place. You've got like a control for, for anybody group. watching. If you're wanting us to come out, here, here's here's what our clients do that I can't stand. As soon as we walk in the door to like start setting up they'll start telling everybody in the room what's going on and i can't stop you it, yeah. it, it, there's oh and this happened over here and blah, blah, blah. so usually it, it'll be like me and sarah or me and don or me you know me and somebody else will go in and heard this person somewhere and, and let them talk and tell us what's going on while everybody else kind of Plugs our ears by, and goes la 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 yeah la, la. waits by the car because we always want half the group to not know anything about right. the environment right. but yeah um Sometimes, sometimes I don't do any history before I go. I, I just go in completely oh, okay. clean slate, and then I, I'll go look it up. At, and That's I, big, Kyle, because we were doing history before we went to places, and Kyle was the one place where we didn't do history before. Like, we did Antioch's history and stuff before I did we a went quick out. Google search, mm-hmm. and it's, it, like, nothing came back. Like, there, there, there wasn't, the only history that came up was, you know, the... The cemetery had been open from blah, 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 but there were no reports of parents. Like, we didn't see anybody saying they saw a ghost there or anything like that. You, usually, if you put in ghost, comma, location yeah. in a Google, you'll find something. No, oh, yeah. Somebody posted something. But then the experiences we had so mirrored the history we found. Yeah, we, yeah. We, I really had to dig to find any real history for it. Like, I had to go find an old history book from like the 1970s that was written by the grandson of somebody that founded the area and then when i started reading that i was like holy cow yeah that that was nuts and i think that changed a lot of the way we do before we go into investigations because i wonder sometimes if we had known before we went into kyle if there if it had been different I, there's really no way to know. I mean, we've tried testing that with like we've taken other mm-hmm. people out there and didn't tell them anything about it. And it's that age old question of why would a cemetery be haunted? Right. And the thing is, most locations of Texas cemeteries were previously towns. Right. Well, this one wasn't. No, this one wasn't. But places like Antioch and uh, my favorite uh, Rock Church were both cities. And there was some sort of fight or tragedy or fire usually that happened in these places or the economy switched and they had to move a railroad town popped up too close that's when it starts lending more credibility to a place being haunted as opposed to people are buried there because why would you want to hang out in a cemetery once you're dead doesn't seem like a place i'd want to hang out Hmm. or or maybe you actually would well yeah me i like cemeteries (laughs) Maybe these things like cemeteries. Okay. They're, a bunch They're quiet. Of weirdos like They're, me. There's nobody messing with them. And then once in a while, they get to watch teenagers, you know, smoke weed and make out. Yeah. It's, I don't know what else happens in, in a cemetery. Well, like, we wander around out there. Yeah. I would find it amusing. I would just mess oh, with yeah. ghost hunters constantly. Well, there was that time we were at Antioch and a car drove by and you're like, we should hide behind the headstones and then jump out. I'm like, no, they're they're hillbillies. They will oh, shoot us. Yeah, you can't do that in Texas. <laughs> we can't do that that's, in Grandview especially. Um, so I know from Sarah, you're, you're pretty active with your church. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of curious how you reconcile your interest with the paranormal and how we approach it you know, like with your religion and faith, because like um, a lot of a lot of Christianity says it's sacrilegious to even do that. For example, Treetop Terrace with the gambling. Like, I wonder if they would consider it witchcraft almost calling upon spirits. dead. wasn't there a dude that did that in the Bible and the spirit was like, hey, knock that off. This is the same lady that then was using the uh, The the, dowsing rods, the dowsing rods to find, you know. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, it's okay because it's science. (laughs) I, I really wanted to go. It's not. Oh, we, we've it's gotten it so sophisticated, and we think we've, we've done so in our churches, too. 
the, the to me the go-to book for paranormal and supernatural activity is a book like the Bible. It's full. That's right. how I was convinced yeah. to read it. I had of a Sunday school teacher that, that told me it was a horror messes story. messes with your mind. It's, it's, we, we, but we, we want to shove that aside. There's, there's, there's witchcraft. There's sorcerers. Mm-hmm. There's demon possession. You know, uh, there's, there's Jesus having conversations with demons. Uh, there's several instances where the rotation of the earth was either Halted. stopped or it was reversed. Uh, <laughs> Uh, pitch blackness in, in the I'm, middle of the day. Yeah, uh. there, uh, there's so much in there that, that, but they don't. They shake their heads. You know, there's or 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 stories in in the book of Genesis where the angels, yeah. fallen angels, had sex with women, right, and Nephilim. created a race of giants, the Nephilim. You know, mm-hmm. well, we kind of read that and go, blah, blah, blah. Right. just keep on going. This way, it's uh, yeah, we cherry pick what we want out of it. We or, do. or some people cherry pick what we they want. We do. Out of it. We really do. So, and I, some people take it too far, probably. You know, and it's a burning witches. You mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I have to to believe that there's a a there's a world out there that we we don't witness. We don't we right. don't see. We we're not. Uh, there's there's one of the the prophets at one time uh, praying for a man to see with spiritual eyes and then he began to see these things that <laughs> I didn't see before. Who was the the was he a prophet in the Bible that was the, the movie Chariot of the Gods, uh, where he's seeing all these weird things and they Ezekiel. make Chariot of the Gods, yeah, and Ezekiel and in the way he was describing them, they um, in Chariot of the Gods they. Uh, liken it to uh, machinery. Well, I mean, the way the way it is actually described in the text is machinery. Well, if you look at Um, some of the passages in Revelation, weird flying things with locust bodies and heads like lions. Right. See, I I would find that the... But but you don't see paranormal investigation as like dabbling in the occult like... No. uh, Like a lot of people... Because we get that. Well, I don't know. I probably do. I've gotten that a few times. I probably do dabble in the occult. I mean... With you know, with letting Elena Some do like friends, readings yeah. and stuff like that, but even just going in with a camera and looking for a ghost is like a lot of times frowned upon. I'm just I was wondering. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I if, mean, if if that is a, I mean, there would something be, you have to reconcile. There would be people or, that would frown on me. Do you, right. You're doing what? Is that, yeah, well, you probably you don't know, go to church, and you're like, guess what hey, I did? This we went ghost hunting last night. You know, I I normally don't do that. No, but there's some people that that I tell them that I do this and. I said it's a very fascinating thing from a photography standpoint. Is there? It's it's very difficult to do. It's hard to take pictures in the dark. Has has anything that we've captured or or witnessed? I, I don't think you've been on any of the cases where anything like super significant happened. But you, I mean, you know all our stories and mm. things that, and you know we're not insane. Has that changed your perspective on your spiritualism at all? Your your faith, like, it, does it? Has it added validity to it? Has it? It has actually it, has. It, really, it's, it's that that there's that part that we we ignore. Mm-hmm. We don't want to acknowledge it, but but sometimes it it peeks through. It something happens. And right. You got to acknowledge it, it. It is there. It's like well, we don't believe in demon possession. Well, have you read the Bible? Right. Now, what I mean, if it, well, I what if we went and proved parts. every single thing that we've ever found was just total crap? Would that have an effect? You think or? No, you just haven't hit that magic yeah. spot yet. I, I think if your faith is that easily flagged, I, I sometimes wonder if it wasn't strong enough in the beginning. I, mean, I don't mean that to be condescending in any way. Just it seems to me that people that really believe something, like if they believe their house is haunted, there is nothing we can tell them. I don't. Stop I don't there's nothing wrong with believing anything, but but like he was saying, being skeptical is good. Yeah. And, and I mean. He, even in your faith, like you're supposed to be unwavering in your faith, but I think I think anybody that has a really strong faith is has some level of doubt, some level of questioning within them. It, but they're going to come back to the some. They're going to pr- they're going to prove themselves. Yeah, I don't it, think there's anyone a, who has like questioned thing. themselves. Everyone right. has yeah. doubt, right? And if you're not, you're running into trouble, and and that's when you end up on both. Sides. That's when you end up either burning witches. Or, you know, things yeah. like that. When you've gone too far either direction, you, you're not questioning, you know, you know, with Charles Manson, you say, hey, this is what we need to do. As usual, midline is probably 
right. where you need to head towards any way too far on one side or the other, and you kind of fall off the edge. So what's your line in the sand on... Well, how did I... I wrote this so elegantly, and I can't actually verbalize it. I thought you did very well. <laughs> and I'll just read it. After doing more than a few of these investigations, I know you're a person of logic, as well as a person with his own beliefs. There's a growing line in the sand between many religions and science. Mm. What's your outlook on that? Is more one important than the other? And how do you think people should balance that out? I've always been a believer that there is no difference between science and <laughs> I'll say the Bible. I don't like religion, the word, because that's usually just a, a, a set of man-made rules and regulations right. that have been imposed. That but my you, thing's you, always you, been is like I have kind of like a, a personal faith or personal idea, but I'm not a big fan of like organized religion because right. that's, that's somebody wants to be in charge. That, that has done a lot of damage. Right. It really has. You know, if you don't toe the line, you know, well, who's lying? Is it? But I, but I think we find out that there's there's very little uh, separation between uh, the creator of the universe and, and actual science. Uh, I have a, a, a letter on my wall that was from uh, when I was in uh, junior high, wrote to a, a gentleman named uh, Charles H. Towns. He is a professor at the uh, Berkeley in the physics department there. He's one of the men who was uh, involved in the uh, uh, creation of the laser, which was a big deal in 1972. That was a big deal now. That was Buck Rogers. (laughs) It was this thing that they weren't sure what to do with at the time. It was what called the solution looking for a problem. Right. But uh, my science teacher at the time wrote a letter to this, this gentleman who responded to me. That was the most fantastic. I've got it framed. It's on the wall. And Mr. Towns just died a few years ago, at late 90s, and uh, was a, 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 a the Church of Christ. It was a universe. Univ- it, it wasn't the normal Church of Christ. It was another branch of it. But he was the one that stated that there was no difference between science and the Bible. Right. And here's a guy that made big uh, impact on <laughs> on the world because right, everything yeah. we do now is lasers. So it, it's just. Uh, I don't know. We we argue about stupid stuff, and I I think that we'll find out. And we've got the equation now on why the sun does what it does. Well, does the sun know that there's an equation that yeah. proves fusion? What you know? It's, I just I I think sir, you know, you have the scientists or the there can't be a god. There can there can't be any kind of higher power because. I have the equation. And then, and then you have the re- religious people that are like just completely denying science. Like, well, okay, I, I get where you're coming from, that there could be a higher power or whatever, but how are you, you know, this works 100% of the time and is proven. So you're kind of, those people are sticking their head in the sand, yes. I feel like. And I've always I've always been somewhere in the middle. It's like, okay, there, there can be other. Th- there can be paranormal. There can be God. There can be these other things, but they function through some kind of mechanical thing that is explainable, and or, or to a degree, explain. Maybe we can't explain it, but you know, it's there's some kind of logic to it. You know, it's uh, one of the, one of the things that got me thinking that way when I was young. Is my dad was telling me like the Christmas story about the the. Mm-hmm the star that they follow. And he's like, and and my dad was a real analytical person in the way. And I was like, well, that's really cool. You know, he's met, he's like, well, he may not have used, you know, divine power to do it. He's like, it could have been a, they think it could have been a supernova. And he's like, but there's nothing to say that God didn't create a supernova so that that event could happen at that particular point in time. So that, so that that thing could happen. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, you can have a higher power, you can have God, you can have the fantastic and things like that. But there's there's also like a mechanic behind it. And I think a lot of people get confused by our work because they think because we're looking for the mechanic behind it or we're looking for the explanation behind it that we're trying to say there is no paranormal or there is no God. It's no, it's it's not really that. We're just trying to understand right, the mechanic right. by which these... And not because we're really even trying to do anything with it, it's curiosity. And I know just enough to know that I don't know 
anything. Right. I don't and, know. And see, anything. I don't. I don't see a problem with that. Trying to find out. Right. That's, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Uh, we're not, you know, sacrificing goats on a rock or not, something we, like we that. We have not, considered uh, murder to prove one of our theories. Doing, but, you know, so <laughs> we won't invite you on that one. <laughs> I get to take pictures. So as far as paranormal is concerned, what would you consider definitive proof? That's the trick. You know, I don't think we will and, you know, I got find st- it. I got stumped on that uh, recently because, you know, I, I was going through a bunch of stuff and I got caught up in the conversation. I'm like, well, even our stuff isn't definitive proof because, I, you know, this could be this, this could be this. And they, get, and they asked me point blank, well, what would you consider definitive proof? And I was like, uh. uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because whenever someone asks me that question, I get stumped too. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, it'd have to be a ghost and like, it'd have to be like, hey, what up? And there'd have to be like three other people that saw it. But it would have to a, do tricks. I need it to juggle. Right. Here's the thing. That's happened. We were out there. We all saw it. It's done tricks. But we I, we I, recorded it. I've also done it's enough. not definitive proof. I, I know it, enough about medicine and psychology to know that your brain is full of glitches. Yeah. Your brain sucks. We all think it's... The greatest oh, thing. Oh, of all, whatever. <laughs> our brains are great. No, we are no better than dogs. It was a shot through the heart because I felt like, man, what am I doing? I've wasted a lot of money now because <laughs> uh, I don't think there is anything I could do to even prove it to myself. So, And I think that's the problem with our group is we're not trying to prove it to other people. Not exactly. I think we're trying to prove it to ourselves. Yeah. Really, when you get I mean, down I, to I did the, the same bit. thing when I saw the question. I thought, you know, I don't think there is a smoking gun. I don't think you it's could tough. ever achieve that level. You know, that that's always that's the perfect photograph for me is I want the shot that I cannot explain. And, and see, that's the thing, too, because like if you were, you know, there's a there's a part of the book I wrote where I was talking about evidence and definitive proof. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if you were in a murder trial you know, and you saw it with your own eye. For most people, they'd say, well, proof for me would be to see it with my own eyes. But when you're talking about the paranormal, that's the reason we're taking photos and stuff is because you can't trust mm-hmm. what you see with your own eyes. And we know that. Well, the first thing attorneys will tell you is the, 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 the worst you can have is an eyewitness. Right. It's well, I was, five different people saw five different well, things. That's what I was talking about, same. Columbine. So, I mean, you live through the Columbine show. We, well, I watched it in class in junior high. So there's Eric and Kyle or whatever their names are. And uh, they shoot up this school and they start interviewing the kids as soon as they come out. So these kids are covered in blood. They've just seen all their classmates murdered. And they start with the, well, were these kids loners? Oh, yeah, they were loners. They wore black nail polish and trench coats. Turns out none of that was true. They were super popular. Yeah, they were preppies. They were bullies. Yeah. But that has become a narrative because that's what was said first because the news led them to say it. Right. There was no credible eyewitness on the scene. They all died. Well, and, and even in my example, you know, so, okay, you can't trust your, your own eyes, right? So where do you go from there? A picture, video, audio, something like that. Well, that's good for a murder trial because, you know, but then you get to the paranormal. It's like, well, that could be faked. Oh, man. So exactly, you're, you're talking audio and visual evidence isn't good enough evidence for that. Where do you go from there? Um, so in my head, what, what, what what's hopefully making me go forward is that I feel like you can do um, like molecular recordings. And so if you can record an actual environmental change Femto camera. that can be... Yes, but I can't afford that. We can build it. Explain it to your dad, because I don't even know how to explain it. Oh, what? It's a femto. Okay, okay, Stephen, I was at the doctor, and we were talking about x-rays and how far technology has progressed. It's this camera that can take a picture in one one-thousandth of us. It's one one-thousandth or one-tenth. It's a crazy number. It takes a picture so fast, it can see through walls, which wigs me out because nothing is solid, and it bothers me. The shutter speed on it is faster than molecular movement. So it'll take a picture. They did the first experiment. They shot light through a Coke bottle full of water. And you could see the individual particles. It was a short burst of light. And you could see how they scattered, how they burst, like how they go out in different directions, bounce, and come back through the water. And they and they did this like eight minute long recording that in reality is one one thousandth of a second. But they want to use it like they use an fMRI. Right. Where they show you a picture, your brain lights up somewhere. So you want to know how Mm. crazy that technology actually is? Even crazier than the fact that it can see through things because it's faster than molecular movement? It's approaching the level of faster than light, right? So anything that travels faster than light 
will appear to be moving backwards through time because it's moving so fast. So you're about <laughs> you're about a nanosecond away. I'm already confused. You're about a nanosecond away from having a camera that can <laughs> take a picture of uh, the past. <laughs> Your camera just evaporates. Of course, what would help in that case, I, I think that I've heard that as light goes through something like water or a lens, it'll lose about 40% of its velocity. Yeah, it slows. Mm-hmm. As it goes through. Of course, the weird thing about light, as soon as it exits, it picks back up to its... How does it... That's a whole different thing there. It's I, a wave and expi- a particle. I actually could explain that, Yeah, but I, I would I, need I, a whiteboard. Uh, my nose would bleed. Someone asked, um, do you believe in an afterlife? That t- I can't my I, my vision's blurry. I can't. I do. I, I I do believe in an afterlife, and that's just one of those. <clears throat> unfortunately, you get to that magic spot where you go. It's a matter of faith, right? And that's when people's heads explode, you know. And because just believing something is is well, I don't believe in that. What, do you believe in life on other planets? Yep. Yeah. Well, like okay, I, I can't. I can't say. It, it, maybe it'll change. In, in my opinion, changes on a daily basis. Do you believe basis. in an afterlife, Brad? Well, here's the here's the thing. Right now, maybe not so much, but I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> because the idea of nothingness is, is terrifying. Is way worse than anything else. I don't know. Hell sounds worse. Now, but yeah, this, this if, is as good as it gets. If, if you're asking <laughs> me. If, it. <laughs> If you're asking me if there's evidence of an afterlife, no. Oh, no. And and I absolutely don't think that, like, if there is an afterlife, it's you don't turn into a ghost and wander around. Mm. Because of all the paranormal evidence, of anything that's even close to valid for what we've got, of evidence we found, anything that does seem like it's a person or human seems more like an echo, more like like just a natural thing, not not mm, like a okay. consciousness. It's just residual. Like so I think that's a thing. I, I think there are like human ghosts like walking around, but it's not the person. It's the feeling of the cat. R- yes. Yeah. The and cat's it, not it's there. just it's, it's just something happening in time space that's got a physical explanation that's just it's really fantastic to us right now. Anything we've talked to that's intelligent where it like responds and it seems like it knows we're there. It's never or been it does, human. It sometimes it seems like it's pretending to be human, but it's not human. And so I feel like there are things we don't understand. And you can either call it a demon or you could call it an alien. It's it's an alien is actually the best. Because well, it that's is what alien, I, but people conflate that with from outer space. But right, Stephen I, and me used to have a conversation where he'd say, "Well, no, God is an alien," right. and it used to drive my mom nuts until she, he sat down and explained it. Well, right. he's not from here. He is alien, right. not and, an alien. And the other thing is too is I feel like a lot of people jump to um, their idea of demon when they run into those things because they feel like because they don't understand it it's negative Bad, yeah. but if you're thinking of something that's alien there's no way you could understand its motivations either so in, in isn't that the scary part we're the ants under the magnifying glass and yeah they know more the, the than we person, could ever yeah if you give a kid a magnifying glass and it's burning ants it's not necessarily acting evil but to the ant that's yeah. the devil <laughs> You, you know, and, and that's kind of what I touched and, on. Andrew in, accidentally in my, crushing in a lightning book. bug. Yeah, that's yeah, because mm. the the main villain in that is a a demon or whatever, but he's not he's not bad. He's not a bad guy. Now, really horrible things are happening in that book, but you get to the end of it, and you know he's kind of explaining, it and it's like, oh, I really don't understand anything that he's talking about. You know, he's talking about, no, I'm doing this because I love you, and you're like, what? Yeah, and, yeah. So, so I mean, one of the next last questions is going to pick on you for being all old and stuff. Uh, so you lived through the, four, the the Lake Worth monster. You've lived through the JFK assassination. I mean, were there even TVs when you were born? Yes, there were <laughs> TVs. <laughs> like when my kids asked where I was when JFK wow. was shot. Hey, hey, my grandma came here in a covered wagon. So, um, Do you have a favorite conspiracy theory or a parano- paranormal event that you've witnessed over your life? <clears throat> What's disturbing is that I, I, I start listening to more conspiracy theories as I get older. I don't know what's happening. It's like, uh, I'm beginning to think that something's going on here. That My I'm dad did that, too. Is there just a certain age where... I, I'm, I'm Okay. There's, 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 
Y- yeah, yeah I know my mom's been doing that too. And it's like, like my it's dad weird. was really even keel, and then one day I came in, he's like, you know, there might have been a second gunman uh-huh. on there. And I'm start, uh... what? Nine eleven might have been a hoax. <laughs> Jet fuel can't melt steel beams. Oh no! <laughs> like oh no, they've hit that stage in life. Well, yeah, it's when you've been told stories in the past that you've found out that weren't true. So I think that you naturally begin to question a little more. As you, as you go through life, I don't have a a, 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 con, a particular conspiracy theory. You know, I, I think the whole JFK thing bores me. I don't. Oh uh, God, me too. I just like, <laughs> oh yeah, right, right. I right. think there was more than one shooter, but I definitely think the bullet that got him was was shot by Oswald. I have from purposefully there. refused to listen to anything about the JFK assassination. I thought about the same thing too until the day that I finally drove through. Dealey Plaza, and I looked at the sixth floor window and the spot, and I went, "That's not that far." Mm-mm. Yeah, it's, they use wide it's angle like lenses and down. stuff. It looks like this huge distance. They, like, they make it look like it's really we a really really tough shot, and it's, and it's not. And what was it? Summer last year when we shots. were there? Yeah, we're, we're I, I've been there a couple times because my mom took me when I was younger. We rode the TRE and went down there, but yeah, it's like right down the window, like twenty feet back. It's not exactly it's a crazy not, trick shot. Uh, no, and, and it, it took him two. He, he didn't get him on the first one. Yeah. It, t- it, it took three or four shots complete, you know, but only two actually hit. Yeah. So, and I actually believe that they landed on the moon. I don't know. That's just a weird thing with me, actually. I, so, they definitely landed on the moon. They definitely landed on the moon. But here's the th- here is why the conspiracy <laughs> nuts get... Here's why the conspiracy Van nuts Allen radiation are belt. able to get people to listen to them. <laughs> It's because we were, we were in the Cold War, you know, and we were trying to get there, and it was really important that we... Uh, we win. You're, mm-hmm. lo- you're looking at me like I know something. I wasn't alive, by the way, but looking back... I was bar- born the year Sputnik went up. Okay. Well, it was That's really important that we give. get there. So I, <laughs> I think know what year you were Even born. if we didn't go, I think we would have faked it, first off. Oh, yeah, we would have. Because there was no way we weren't going to land there. And B, it is known that... For a lot of the publicity photos and stuff like that, NASA did use like stock imagery. Like a lot of the things that they did try to pass off as um, them in space doing spacewalks and on the moon. It it Be is careful here because there is a rising amount of er- people on this uh, Earth that think it is flat. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. Oh. It's we we know that those photographs were fake, but even NASA was saying, "All right, look." We were trying to do really like if you're doing publicity photos for your restaurant or oh, whatever. Oh yeah, you don't use real food. You fake ice cream well, with. Well, you, you might potatoes. take a picture of the food and then like Photoshop and somebody eating it, and so it's that part of it's fake for the publicity. But it doesn't mean you don't cook that dish in your restaurant. Yeah, you still serve it to people, you know. And so we did go. There's a lot of footage of us actually going, but the way they were trying to like pack, it's like our show. We're not faking any of our evidence or anything like that, but I'm cutting. Shots, yeah. I'm cutting 162 hours out of that investigation <laughs> to deliver something that you will actually watch. Yeah, because it's really boring. Otherwise. Right. So that's so that happened, and then you have these a holes. They're like, well, they did this one thing, so the whole thing's it was done by Stanley Kubrick. So, so the last question is, I'll answer this question for you. You actually skipped one before, so before you do that, okay. Last what's, one, what's what's the next? It, it's we need to go. Um, it was an equipment thing. Oh, if we had an unlimited budget oh. to buy more specialized, I think I know the answer to this. Yeah, because I. What would you be interested in yeah, getting your hands yeah, on? Yeah, say I, say I won the lottery and I was like, hey, guess what? None of us have to work anymore. This is our full time job now. I'm Particularly gonna, for ghost hunting. I want at least generation three or better night vision capability i want uh enough money to buy a nice eight thousand dollar dslr and have it completely uh uh changed over to infrared i want the hot filter removed professionally i don't want it it's just now a dedicated infrared camera that is a very expensive uh, gamble right there (laughs) I've I've modified so many of the you cheap. have and you've terrified me when I it's, when you do that I'm very very good at it Ugh. and I, uh, after I get the new DSLR I'm gonna take the old one I'm gonna try it ah uh, okay 
Uh, I'm going to wait till I get the the. See, I can't watch it. I can't. I can't do it. I'd have to turn it over to somebody. I can't have somebody watch me do it and either. have them do it. I'm like this it's like me like trying tweezers. to do my audio for the story. You I kept looking even, at me. I can't even clean the sensor in my camera. It's like oh, just you know sticking so, something in there. Is just, I well, mm. I like taking things apart and putting yeah, it back together. You do. It's just a, but you know, if I had an unlimited budget, I wouldn't care. You know, it's like yeah, I would buy two cameras, and then one would just be infrared. And so those were some things I'd I'd like to do, be and able then, to see in the dark. Say so this last question, I, I'm going to answer it before I ask it. If I had a dream location to investigate and I can't do it because it's really disrespectful and I wouldn't do it, it would be a concentration camp. There you go. It would probably be Auschwitz or Bergen-Belsen. I would want to go in there and ghost hunt. There would be places where horrible, horrible things happened. Somebody asked that on our website. They said, um, they asked, I hadn't answered it yet, but they directly asked us, hey, uh, would it be disrespectful to ghost hunt at Auschwitz? Yes. I, mm. I, I, okay, there's two ways I feel about it. One, if we could go in there privately and we could be respectful and we could not post. Because I've seen vi- videos of girls in there taking selfies and they're just smiling. Like, knock it off. <laughs> of course, there's also a growing portion of the planet that mm. thinks the Holocaust didn't happen. I, but I, I would w- want to do Auschwitz. With that location, the way we have previously done our investigation videos in that style no i wouldn't want to do it that way i would go in i would do an investigation i would post it up with the new format that we're going to because i think we could give it a treatment of more respect because we're focusing more on the history and the experiences and stuff like that there and we could be more impactful about educating people about the location and what happened there along with Another seeing if there's anything paranormal that would that happens, be so. such a difficult investigation. I haven't been to um, Auschwitz, but I have been to Dachau, outside of Munich, which was the kind of the prototype. What was it of the concentration camps? And just walking in to the place, it hurts. The feeling is, I you can't describe it, and you see things like the uh, they had a, a wall that they put prisoners up against and machine gunned them. That was just a, a common practice. And you notice in front of this wall is a, a ditch that's been dug out. And it was there to carry the blood off. Oh, it's wow. called a blood ditch. They've got a sign there. And I'm trying to imagine that much blood hmm. that is being carried off in a ditch. I just, I, I, there's just things you can't. That was, uh, I went to the. It would be a tough. Uh, I went to the Holocaust Museum in D.C. And we were there and there was uh, a group of teenagers there, young preteens. And I watched this girl. I was watching her while she was watching a video. And she's laughing. She's giggling. And then all of a sudden, I see her see it. And her whole face changed. And she leaves in tears. I was like, that was a weird thing to watch. Is her to go from laughing, jovial, this is silly, ha, ha, ha. And something came up on the video that It's also weird stuck. to feel good about the fact that, like, she got it, too. Because, like, it's, like, when you first said that, I thought it was going to a totally Mm-mm. place that would offend me. But then I feel good about it that that person feels so horrible. Well, it's not that I want them to feel horrible. It's that you want them to understand. But I know my particular well, problem. I remember when I was in school and they showed the Challenger video. Oh. And, uh-huh. and, and I, I was a little kid. We're talking like fifth grade. I, I didn't care. It was fifth mm-hmm. grade. And I cut a joke about what something. What color were her eyes? Yeah, I, dude, who knows what I One said. It was fifth way. grade. I, I just yeah. remember getting ripped into the hall and the teacher screaming at And I didn't really understand it at the time. And it, it clicked a couple of years later. There was a teacher on the challenger yeah the teachers were uh-huh. really invested in that in like it it clicked it suddenly clicked and when i, I went to the holocaust museum in um there's one in houston that yeah. matt took me to and that was pretty brutal also um i i don't know how to phrase it correctly but i would love to go to a concentration camp the and, problem and go, is with our group is when we feel physically when we feel mentally stressed we crack stupid jokes Right. And I would not want to be caught doing that. But it's interesting because um, when the 10 year anniversary of 9 11 came about, my daughter was born in 2006. So, of course, she's never seen footage of this. She walks in while me and Allie are watching this video and she goes, What horror movie are you watching? Hmm. And she walks back out of the room. I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not real. It's, it's almost like the Holocaust with us. But yeah, I'd feel really uncomfortable going into a situation, like, especially with Allie, because I know there'd be jokes. There would be inappropriate jokes because that is how I cope with my feelings. 
inappropriate jokes. I th- I think I'd be too enamored with the with the location. I, I'd be too wrapped mm. up in it to even crack jo- like because I crack jokes at the worst time. But th- that might be like one of the few things that's totally off. Yeah, I don't me. think me and Allie cracked a joke the entire time we were in that Holocaust museum, which is weird for us. I don't think me or Allie said boo the whole time we were there. Well, you didn't actually even let your dad actually answer. Oh, the sorry. Question. Yeah, what would be your dream location? Well, it would be a similar spot like that if you if you if you were approaching the paranormal from a residual human spirit something and to me that would be a, a place that would test that that's uh, if i would believe in negative energy that's where it would be at because i'm feeling it when i go into places does that mean it's there it's just because i'm creeped out by the the events of history on, on what happened Maybe. oh Catherine says you'd really need an interpreter that's I'm one of the german do you speak dad <laughs> Uh, well, that's the funny thing. It seems all EVPs are always in English, in English. no matter where you go. Which is interesting because we've actually, at Kyle and uh, Carter, we've tried looking up the Native American language of the area of the time and saying stuff in that language. But I'm from Texas. I can't even speak Spanish properly with my accent. So I don't know if we're saying it right or if we're offending someone. Yeah, because we're doing the inflection wrong. We're like, F you, ghost. Because, <laughs> I mean, in some other languages, it's all about what letter you put inflection on. Right. And I don't know n- enough about Native American language to know if we're saying it right. But I've always wondered, or why would they speak our language? So, uh, uh, Constantine uh, Radave, the you know, invented the, the diode and, mm-hmm. did, and did a lot of the early research, or did a lot of the early making EVP research somewhat credible for the time or whatever but when he was capturing his evps he was he was getting them in all different languages he was getting them in french he was getting them in english he was getting them in german um and he would have to he would recognize something as speech and then he would have to bring in translators to try to figure out so what it said do you think that maybe if something was in another language we our brains wouldn't pick up the pattern we wouldn't recognize it I, as language. I feel like I skip over a lot of stuff because it might be in a language. I, you, cause since I'm not associating words with it, unless it's in English, I don't get it. And that's why I think it would be really good if we had somebody that was multilingual yeah. helping with that. Because they could hear different things. Because like, I would maybe pick up on Latin because I know some Latin. I would pick up on Spanish. I would pick up on Spanish because I hear it all the time. Definitely pick up on English. But like Native American, it's just going to sound like, you know, unless it sounds like something I've heard in a movie or whatever, I'm not going to. I mean, that's literally why we used it as a code. (laughs) That's the other reason I don't do it solely with headphones. I'm looking for uh, changes in the waveform. But a lot of times, you know, a lot of it just sounds like noise. So Mm. I wouldn't understand it as a language. Um, I think an interpreter would be, you know, somebody multilingual helping with the audio would be great. I never even thought of that. (laughs) But I, good luck finding Native I think American. It would, uh, yeah, I think it would also be good. Uh, one of the things I wanted to try is you know the uh, the the speech to typing mm-hmm. software. Set that to accept like all languages, and then hook a microphone up to it and see if when nobody's talking, if it picks up hmm. words. In it start, but that uh, that software is pretty expensive. Actually, it's like three hundred dollars so to get the stuff that actually works. But it, it would be interesting. That would be one way to get things in different languages because it would be language neutral. Like it, it's just looking for any kind of noise and trying to turn it into words, which is more credible than like the word bank yeah. sort of approach. Anything else, Mr. Brad? Uh, she asked a question, but I'm not going to answer it. I'll, I'll answer it offline later because we're at two hours and 15 minutes. So EVP in reverse. It's like Paul. Oh, dead i never understood why why any of them would be in reverse like i see people that they're like oh i played it backwards or <laughs> i i i made it like really really long. why like why would it be backwards N- now i think you're just kind of reaching because you can play you can play i can put random sounds together and play it for people and they're gonna hear words in it every time mm-hmm. it's it, we actually need to run that experiment after you know we get the eeg and then we start doing the psychological test put like random sounds through audio and see how many people hear stuff are, yeah hear stuff in it and, uh. and th- but then they're not going to be happy when we tell them no it's just random sounds there's no words in there no i definitely heard something but um 
yeah, so it was great having you on. Well, I had a good time. I hope you did. Glad to be uh, here. And I the, talk a lot. In the, it's like ascending Mount Olympus. <clears throat> I, it's to the, be here, <laughs> the nerd cave. Um, <laughs> the nerd cave. No, but um, no, it was really good having you on. I I love having you on the investigations, and um, it's really interesting to to see you do your photography. Actually, um, when you started doing like your light painting thing. I've rethought how I want to do the mono wavelength photography thing because we've pretty much got to the point where we're disproving orbs. But I think if I um, um, increase the or uh, decrease the shutter speed, then we could also get the streaks, but oh, but in the okay. color. And so because a lot of people they they get it and they're like, well, it can't be a piece of dust because it went from here to here. I think I can recreate that doing it the same way I'll see what you and, mean. and then and using a better camera I'll be able to mess with like the ISO and all that to get the to change the lighting conditions a little okay. bit more while still isolating the colors and so we're going to be able to replicate a lot more of those shots that people get but still prove that it's something solid in the air that's reflected right, back so right. um, I've been saying for a while okay what's the next step in this experiment I think that's the next step okay. is using a better camera that where we can vary the amount of exposure and, and all that mm -hmm. under the same conditions, then we'll be able to reproduce more of those effects and then go back and say, okay, it's definitely reflected light or, or not, or, or maybe we find or something not, else. Yeah. yeah. And, and then from there, then we'll have to we, find another step. We, I, I, we want the or not. That's, I like it. We got the one or did you ever see the or not picture we got out of Kyle? No. We'll have to show you. It's okay. It's yeah, I'll, it's yeah, it's like the one picture out of a million. So it's not evidence because it's the exception to the rule. But we we did get back like a a light aura that wasn't the same color as the light we were. So using. when you're going back, you know you you don't go to Kyle and you don't ask me to, to go. So this was a while. This one was a while ago. It was before our last investigation that, that we did out there. I can oh. tell Sarah doesn't want to. Oh, she wants to go. I, I always want to go to Kyle. I, I haven't set up a date for it because I've been super busy and I'm scared of that place. So maybe you two could go and see We what were happens. concerned. We drove out there a few weeks ago I told because them. there was a big fire that went through. And I could oh, yeah, just see the whole thing being burned to the ground. But it's good. It smells like Of course it is. Ashtray, it's protected. It's protected. By the thing. That walks on four legs and on two. I don't know. All right. So I feel like it was a good show. Thanks for coming on. You bet. Um, and maybe we'll do this again. And hopefully we go on some more investigations soon. We keep progressing, coming up with new stuff. Need some more pictures. Yeah. But it's summer in Texas, so we've been kind of avoiding going outside. Mm. Um, our next podcast will actually be with uh, uh, Rose Dumaine. She'll be in the studio actually doing the uh, free uh, readings for you guys, which I'll, I'll give you guys more information on that. That's going to be on the uh, 11th. I think I scheduled it for it. Could totally be lying. Um, so we'll, I'll get that information up there. And then after the, the week after that will be the exorcism debate that we've all been preparing for. Right? I haven't. Not at all. I don't need to. I Science ha is on my side. I hate that I have to prove that exorcisms are real. <laughs> I have to argue for this side that I don't want to argue for. But um yeah, that's going to be a thing. And then um oh the the other thing I wanted to mention was that um AW Perry recently called me back and we're going to be changing the way we do the paranormal porch. We're actually going to be giving tour uh ghost tours of the house yep. this year. Um so It's a cool location. Like and, historically it's and, really cool. And it's one of the ones in our book too. Mm -hmm. Um it's got haunted dolls that hissed at us. The dolls uh, are horrifying. Yeah, so they're actually going to let us take groups through there, and we're going to talk about the evidence we actually captured in each room and all that. So that should be really good. So we're going to post up more information in the comments, and more stuff's going to be coming to the website. And don't forget the the audio book is also out. So uh, be sure to check that out on Audible, iTunes, Audible, Audi Audible, iTunes, <laughs> and Amazon. And uh, if you're going to go ghost hunting this weekend, everybody be safe. Sarah doesn't want you to be safe, but I do. <laughs>
Thanks everyone for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did and you would like to know more about NT Paranormal and our research, please visit us at www.ntparanormal.com or our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ntparanormal. You can also check out our book, After Dark Paranormal Investigations, True Cases of the NT Paranormal Team on amazon.com or find our articles in Paranormal Hauntings Magazine. Before we go, we would also like to thank our supporters at Paranormal Hauntings Magazine, Paranormal Investigations Equipment, PIE, Ghost House Paranormal, the Granberry Paranormal Expo, and the Tyler Paranormal Conference. Until next time, everyone stay safe out there and stay open-minded.